12 or more points if they just held leads and got the two points for a win rather than the one for a shootout loss as they've gotten a couple of times or zero. One thing that has been good for the Houston Arrows has been the production of the Mark Freer, Scott Arneal line, especially Mark Freer. Mark Freer and Scott Arneal, two guys counted on to deliver, and they have been, each with eight points in the last five games. Freer has the first ever power play goal for the Arrows. He also has the first ever shorthanded goal for the Arrows. We look for Mark Freer to have a good offensive game here today. Yeah, he already has a goal and three assists in his last two hockey games. It's time for the Oshman's Game Plan, brought to you by Oshman Super Sports USA, and quite frankly, the Arrows have got to stop letting teams off the hook. When you get a lead, don't start sitting on it. Try to add to the lead. Do the things you've been doing to get the lead. Do those to take it on out. Finish the game. They've got to pass the puck a little better, and it's their third game in less than three days. There's going to be some huffing and puffing. We'll see it in the third period. They just got to go get it. All right, up next, Russ Small chats with the head coach of the Arrows, Terry Ryskowski. That's next on HSE. Houston Arrows Hockey on HSE is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. And by Columbia HCA, Healthcare Corporation, a new commitment to healthcare together. On November 14th, 1994, something of Olympic proportions is taking place. Golf is becoming an Olympic event with the first annual U.S. Olympic Celebrity Golf Classic while you play golf with yesterday's Olympian. You'll be helping send tomorrow's Olympians to the Games. America doesn't send its athletes to the Olympics. Americans do. For more information, call 214-220-0300. Houston heats up again. The excitement of the 94 NBA season is about to blast off. And the world champion Rockets are smoking with preseason action. Monday night on HSE. It's time to jam. Can you dig it? Get ready for a conference call with the SEC. Each game, a new hero. Tennessee and South Carolina, Saturday at 1130, live on HSE. Welcome back to the Summit. I'm Russ Small. With me, Arrows coach Terry Ruskowski. Roscoe, a very busy weekend. Three games and three nights, and this is number three here this afternoon. Three games and less than three nights in the afternoon. It's it's a very hectic schedule, especially when you have nine days off. Then you kind of have to come back and play these games, and I think last night was kind of an indication of a tired hockey team, and uh, we start, came off real well in the first period, the second period, and the third period really faded away real much, and uh, a lot, I should say. And It was something that uh, uh, you know, you don't want to do that in front of your home crowd. You know, you, yeah, if you want to have those type of games, you want to do it on the road and not be uh, seen by your hometown. But um, hopefully by this afternoon, we can re regroup and come back strong at the, the Minnesota team. What are you teaching the guys, telling the guys, what are you coaching them to do with a two-goal lead? Because whatever it is, it hasn't quite sunk in yet this year. We did it very well in Las Vegas, though. That's the thing that's so dis you know disruptive for a, a coach and uh, disheartening because they do it very well on, on one time, and the other time they don't seem to do it and uh, every team that I've coached if you got two goals early it seemed like to sit back and think this is going to be an easy game and everything's going to fall into place as it should like a puzzle but a lot of times it doesn't do that and the other teams get momentum they make a big save uh, on one half and it comes back and score and it, this game of hockey is momentum and if you have momentum on your side it's going to be in your favorite winning hockey game and we just have to get that uh, killer instinct when you have a guy down you got to keep him down and we just don't have that yet uh, especially at home get him down and put him away here this afternoon coach thanks very much good luck thanks russ arrows coach terry ruskowski i'm russ small the face off is coming up so stay with us here on hse there's no doubt that the sun influences our weather and the weather channel would like to show you how the sun also influences your cable tv viewing your local cable system receives television signals from a satellite occasionally the satellite will get right between the earth and sun when that happens, there'll be a couple of minutes when the sun's more powerful waves will affect the clear picture you're used to. This will happen mostly in the afternoons and only for a few days during the year. When you say it, stay tuned because your clear cable picture will be right back. A message on behalf of your cable system brought to you by the Weather Channel. Sunday night, the Steelers and the Cardinals come to play on TNT. The Bunny System, where the two-minute warning means... Pick up your body parts and attend to the wounded. And that's why on Sunday night, we come to play TNT, the Steelers, and the Cardinals. 80s 
Eastern, 5 Pacific, Sunday night NFL on TNT. Listen to Mark Kessler mornings on Z107.5 to win NFL on TNT prizes. Welcome back to the Summit in Houston, everybody. Adam Gordon along with Russ Small. And let's take a look at the starting lineups first for the Minnesota Moose. Starting on defense, Brad Miller and Reed Larson. At center, Dave Christian. Left wing, Dave Snuggerud. And right wing, Daniel Shank. And in goal, it'll be Tom Draper, who uh, lost opening night in Denver, really struggled. But after that, has started to place pretty good hockey for the Moose. For the Houston Arrows, starting on defense, Chris Foy and Rob Robinson. At center, Mark Freer. Starting at left wing, Scott O'Neill. At right wing, Graham Townsend. And in goal. The man, Troy Gamble, had an outstanding hockey game against the Las Vegas Thunder Friday, and he'll be called upon to play as well tonight. The Arrows in their home whites defend the goal to our right, and the Minnesota Moose, who Russ, I think, may have the one of the coolest logos in the league, defend the goal to our left in their row black uniforms. Well, you can have a cool logo, and that doesn't help <laughs> you if you can't play a good hockey, and they've won one hockey game, and as we said at the top, I think this is a game the Arrows should win. And they got to do it. They got the home ice advantage the home crowd let's find out here we go off the face off the moose win the draw and up the left side now miller tips the puck into the arrow zone out of the net it is gamble he'll slow the puck and now it is robinson he'll start it from right to left for the houston arrows we're underway from the summit glad to have you with us here on the railroads broadcasting network arneal now rolls the puck into the moose zone back is miller up the left side clangs it off the glass it'll go to the line not out picked up by reed larson he'll charge up ice through the neutral zone fired it into the arrow zone out of the the net gamble he'll slow for robinson motors in behind his net and up the right side he will come rink wide pass eludes arneal in there is chris foy trying to gather it in he's shouldered into the boards by miller now the puck shot out this center ice and here come the minnesota moose snuggerud fires it into arrow territory daniel shanks entered that pass but it's picked up by townsend and away he will come now townsend right side shoots the puck into minnesota territory and now snuggerud back here's hines up the side get it out the center ice for stefan Moran. He'll move in the right side with a backhander. Went upstairs high and wide. Now Tippett trying to clear it ahead for Clayton Young. He'll gallop the center ice for the arrows. Young shoots it into the moose zone. Out of the net, Draper. And he'll leave it for Gord Hines in behind the net. Hines along the firewall. Picked up by Yo. Watched by Hines. They're skate to skate along the boards as they try to dig it out. It's frozen along the boards. And Brad Watson, our referee, will halt play there with 18.41 left in the first. No score. Good start for both teams up and down the ice. A couple of guys here. Interesting thing about uh, Minnesota, the whole state. They used to live there. They love their own. Guys who live and grew up in Minnesota or play there, they'll always be Minnesotans. And so it's not a surprise to see the Moose stocking the franchise with a lot of guys that maybe at one time played for the North Stars. Maybe went to the University of Minnesota playing great collegiate hockey or came out of Minnesota and went to play someplace else. We'll talk about that later. Quick shot off the faceoff by Clayton Young is deflected up and out of play. And and we'll take a timeout. One and a half played here in the first. No score. We're back after this. This label tells you it's 100% cotton. This label tells you it's 100% real cheese. And this label tells you it's 100% low fares. Always check the label. Southwest, the low fare airline. On most airlines, you can only get a low fare to a few places. But Southwest has low fares everywhere we fly. So for low fares every time you fly, don't get stuck on some other airline. Southwest, the low fare airline. Face off in the circle to the left side of Tom Draper. Adam going along with Russ Small. It's the Moose and the Arrows. No score in the hockey game. Quick shot by Clayton Young, and that sizzles wide of the net. Now it's out to center ice and picked up by Archie. Todd Archie throws it to the firewall, trying to get it over to John Young. He's got it. Hash marks left side. Center the pass. The drive went just wide as Blair Atchinham let that go. Now the puck shot all the way down the ice by the Arrows. It will be icing. Is back to touch Dean Kolstad. He's got it, and play is halted with 18-14 to play in the first. There's no score. I was thinking about the uh, the Minnesotans on this squad as I look at their starting lineup and saw guys like Reed Larson, who I think himself is older than the Zamboni machine. Uh, Reed Larson has been around the NHL and the IHL uh, for many, many years, played overseas last year. And uh, Dave Christian, who started this game, was a member of the 1980 gold medal winning U.S. Olympic team. And if you've ever heard of the Christian brothers who make uh, hockey equipment, he's uh, one of the sons of the Christian brothers. 
the faceoff now. Here is Murray Eves. He'll move the puck up the left side to center ice. Lead pass for St. Cyr off the mark. Now it trickles into Minnesota territory. Trying to clear it there is Larry Olam. He'll get it out to neutral. But the arrows are there to shoot it back in. St. Cyr clears it into the near corner. After it, it's Mike Maurice. Third game back after knee surgery. And clock will come to the line, and it's out to center ice. Here come the Minnesota Moose. Ivan Corvo. Let's a shot go. That's deflected by Curtis Hunt. Now the puck goes up and out of play. Let's take a timeout. 17.43 to play in the first. We're scoreless back after this. Football. Just old-time rock and roll football. And if you're into the game, whether it's high school, college, or pro, Sunday is the time, and HSE is the play. Get the inside scoop on what's going on week after week with your favorite team and go beyond the X's and O's and into the huddle. Whether it's a grudge match against your rival or just another conference game, these coaches will be here every week to explain the game plan. Stay in the game. Sundays on HSE. Off is in the arrow zone, top of the fire circle, which is to the right of Troy Gamble. Eves against Christian. And drop of the puck. Eves wins the draw. Curtis Hunt now gives it to Jakes in behind the net. Steve Jakes will start it up the wall now. Jakes just missing Eves, trying to feed St. Cyr. This puck goes down the ice, and once again, we got another icing call. Is back to get it as Hackstall, and he'll bring the faceoff back into arrow territory with two and a half gone by in the first. No score. As we mentioned a couple of times already, it has been a very busy weekend for the Arrows in Las Vegas and then a very late game in Vegas with some interesting extracurricular activity in the final minute and a half of that game. A bunch of fights, an all-out brawl and a, a canceled flight and a late arrival to get back here yesterday and just get on the ice for the game, so it's been a wild weekend. Off the faceoff, here is the Moose with a puck. Quick shot, Gamble down to get a piece of that one as Larry Olin let that go and Gamble down and covering up. What time did you get back here Saturday to get ready for the game last night with Peoria? Well, the best was I, uh, my plane, our plane landed 2.30. By the time I got home, changed and everything, and then had to be back here by 4, I was struggling just to get here by 4. And so were the players, and the players then had to get out there and play a hockey game. Yeah. So you can, you can understand why we felt at the top that stamina was going to be a key here for the uh, arrows late in this game. Well, the scary thing, Russ, is the equipment they weren't sure is Reed Larson lets his shot go, and that's blocked by Gamble. Another drive, and that's cleared along as Arneal trying to clear it. It comes to Robinson. But, you know, when switching flights like that, you're worried about the, the player's equipment if that's going to make the connection. It would have been here for game time. Moose trying to put some pressure on and Gamble down to cover up, and right now the Moose jumping all over the arrows, and, you know, this might be expected. Third game in three nights for the arrows, and the Moose here who had the night off last night. In fact, they flew in yesterday afternoon and had a very relaxing evening here in Houston. But it's also the end of a four-game road trip for the Moose, a road trip on which they won their first and only game uh, this year. First as a franchise and only game uh, to date. Uh, so they got to be dragging it a little bit, too. So uh, hopefully we won't be watching a draggy game out here, and the guys will uh, take some deep breaths and get it going. Face off in the circle to the left side of Troy Gamble as it'll be John Young in the circle against Freer. Freer wins the draw, and the puck comes out to Graham Townsend. He'll gallop down the right wing boards and rip it into Minnesota territory. Now Arneal left side, drop for Freer, cuts in with a backhand, left pad save made by Draper. That almost surprised him, it looked like, and now it's John Young racing to center ice. Young crosses the line, shoots, and a blocker save made by Gamble. Puck along the far wall, it's picked up by Arneal, get it to Freer, rolls off the stick and at the center ice. Here's Reed Larson now, shoots the puck into the arrow zone, out of the net, Gamble, leaves for Robinson. Three and a half gone by in the first, still no score. Freer, his pass to center ice for Townsend. He's got a chance. Shoots. Great save by Draper. As he got the glove on and he'll hold on. But boy, you look at that two-on-one break. Arneal was wide open on that. Well, this line has done great lately with Freer and Arneal and Townsend. Townsend takes the shot from the top of the circle, but coming in on the other wing, right through the other circle, was Arneal. And if Graham had been able to slide the puck over, Scott probably could have one-timed it right behind Draper. But not a bad shot by Townsend. He thought he had an angle. He certainly had uh, covered a lot of distance. It closed in, let it fly, and Draper had to make a good glove save. Face off to the left of Draper, and now it is Young, Yo, and Tippett with Valamont and Shargarodsky. Here's the puck back right point. Valamont looped it in behind the net. Here is Tippett. Get it in behind for Clayton Young. Fires it back to Tippett. He's harassed in there by Hines. Chris Hines has Tippett all locked up in the near corner. Yo is there. He scrapes it loose, trying to find Clayton Young, but the Moose come away with it, and they'll get it out to neutral. 
natural ice, no. Kolstad had to go back on the four check of Yo. Here is Williams. He'll get it out to the line and center ice. Shagorodsky rolls it back in for Clayton Young. Right side, circles away from Kolstad. Trying to get it for Tippett. He's wrapped up by Hines in the corner. There to dig out at is Stefan Moran. He's got it for Kolstad. Now on the near corner for Sean Williams. Bumped by Young. Williams and Young go at it. Now Hines and Tippett battle behind the net. It'll go far corner. Still no score in this hockey game. The arrows starting to put a little pressure on. Trying to get something open now as Young working hard along the fire boards. Stops as he pulls up. Lost the puck. Now Mike Yo is there, but he gave the puck away to Kolstad. He'll roll it out to center ice. Here comes Corvo now. He'll move it up center ice as he hits the line with Williams. Now Sean Williams trying to play it, but that's offsides and we'll take a time. Let's take a time out. No score in the hockey game here on the Euros Broadcasting Network. Hi, I'm Hub Arkish, publisher and editor of Pro Football Weekly, and I'd like to make you an offer I really hope you can't refuse. I want to send you a 10-issue trial subscription to Pro Football Weekly for just $10. That's right, 10 issues for just 10 bucks of the best coverage in the NFL. That's more than 70% off the actual cost. Unless you're completely satisfied, we'll automatically renew your subscription when the trial ends and send you a free copy of our 1995 NFL Draft Preview. Don't miss this one-time special. Call today, toll-free, at 1-800-FOOTBALL. Credit card orders only, please. off center ice just outside the arrow zone in a scoreless hockey game Adam Gordon along with Ross Small here is Curtis Hunt off the face off for the Houston Arrows left side he'll lob a pass ahead for the breaking St. Cyr a bit too far but Jerry catches up tries to center the pass but it hit Haxtall now the puck to Larry Olam wrapped up by Maurice in the corner they go at it now as Maurice trying to get it out of there now it is Eves he's got it base in the left circle had that tipped away by Larry Olam and now Daniel Shank out the center ice he's got a 2 one break but he fell as maybe the blue line was a little thick on him there. And he now, dove. Now it is Murray Eves right side. Drop for Maurice. Back Eves centered the pass. The shot. And that was deflected wide. Another centering pass. And that's worked away by Hextall. Now it is out to center ice. Picked up by Shank. That's a two-line pass. And the faceoff comes back into the moose zone with 14-41 to play in the first. Still no score in the hockey game. What you had at one end of the ice was a dive. He felt the hook a little bit and figured if he took a little dive, he'd get the call. He did not get the call. It was uh, Daniel Shank who was skating across the blue line. He just felt the blade of the stick and decided uh, if he took a little dive, he'd get the call. It didn't happen. And down the other end, some good action on the part of the arrows and a tester out in front of Draper. But we remain scoreless with 14:41 to play here in the first period. Hey, look at the last two contests for us: the Las Vegas game Friday night in Peoria last night. A couple of physical grind them out contests. This particular game seems like it's gone up to a passive start. Minnesota with three shots on goal to this point. The Arrows with two. Face off one by Minnesota. They'll shoot the puck in. Brad Miller in Arrows territory, but Gamble gets out and he'll clear it into the near side. Arneal wrapped up. Couldn't get it out of there. It's in behind the net for Chris Foy. He'll shovel a pass for Townsend and he'll gather it up and shoot it to neutral ice. 14 and a half to play in this first period in a scoreless hockey game and the Arrows back in their own end. Robinson out to the right side for Townsend and he'll chip it out to center ice. Brad Miller now back to his own blue line for the Minnesota Moose. It's turned out to center ice, and now it's Hartshe. Todd Hartshe to Blair Atchin, crosses the line, lost the puck, gambled down, trying to smother the puck, and he's got it. And play halted. Let's take a timeout. Six minutes played in the first. No score here on the Earls Broadcasting Network. An ordinary beer can, barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild it. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic can. Coors Light will be that can. Better than it was before. Taller. Thinner. Silver. Next on the Coors Light Channel. Face off in the circle to the right side of Troy Gamble. Six minutes played the first. And it'll be a face off between Clayton Young of the Arrows and... Stefan Moran. Moran wins the draw. Here's a quick drive right on. Gamble the save and picked up by Shagorodsky. Get it out to center ice. Tippett couldn't find the handle. And there is Polstad to shoot it into the arrow zone. Now 
shots. Oleg Shagorovsky in behind his own net. He'll start the pass up the middle to Mario Chitteroni, and he'll move down the right side. Chitteroni crosses the line, leaves for Tippett, shoots, and that goes wide of the net. A weak shot by Tippett, the Draper handled. Now the puck in the near corner for Clayton Young. He tries to get it back. Shagorovsky, the drive block. Chitteroni, a backhander, and Draper stacks the pass and makes a great save. Chitteroni trying to surprise him with the backhander, and Draper there to make the save with 13 and a half to play in the first, still no score. And a good idea by Mario Chitteroni just to try to flip that puck. Unfortunately, he was losing his legs at the moment. Had he been able to uh, stay up and get something on that shot, I think we'd have a one nothing hockey game. He was going down, just tried to flip the puck up, but didn't get as much on it as he would uh, normally have liked was able to get over there and get a piece of it. So, good opportunity for Mario Chitteroni, but he remains scoreless with 13.30 to play in the first. And Coach Terry Ruskowski sending out a new line with St. Cyr, Eves, and Mike Maurice. And off the faceoff now, the Moose trying to bring it out of their zone. It's Larry Olam, defensively paired with Hackstall. He'll get it out to center. It's rolled back into the arrow zone. Hunt rolled off by Shank, now picked up. Here's Snuggaroo, quick drive, left hand save, made by Gamble. Now Curtis Hunt will turn it for the arrows. Can he get it out of there? No. And they're botched up in the corner now. Here is Snuggaroo. Quick shot. Gamble got a piece of it and it popped out in front, but Jakes was there. Steve Jakes hit it out the center ice for Maurice. Right to left they come. Maurice crosses the line and the arrows just offside. Seven minutes played in the first. Still no score. They're working on a four on two right there. Mike Maurice can get the puck on the side and get it into the zone. They're going in two on two with two trailers. That means you bring it in close enough and drop the puck you're going to have an uncovered man there with a good opportunity to get something going from the circle or closer and unfortunately they went offside bad uh, good opportunity gone bad right there on the offside shots now six five in favor of the moose 12 56 to play in this first period Freer, Arneal, and Townsend now for the arrows. Off the faceoff. Moose have got it. Brad Miller in behind his net. He'll look and find a way to break this out of his end. Miller rolls the puck to Blair Ashton along the near side. He's checked by Robinson. Puck comes back to center ice. Chris Foy give it to Robinson. Lost it. Now Blair Ashton romps into the arrow zone. Line shoots. Good defensive play there by Foy to block that. Now the puck in the corner. Foy chips it along the wall for Graham Townsend. Up the side now. Here is Robinson, cuts it out to center ice. Rob Robinson, the big rangy defenseman, shoots the puck into Minnesota territory for Brad Miller. And that's icing, and uh, play whistled down. 12-19 left here in first period, and it's a scoreless hockey game. You know, Adam, I'm wondering, the, the arrows are carrying just 20 on the roster. You're allowed 23. This is the kind of game with the third game in three days where stamina is going to have an effect, where fresh legs, if you had some, could spell the difference between winning and losing this game as you get into the second and third period. I think it's the kind of game where they maybe wish they had a full roster right now and at least get a few extra guys that would be fresh that maybe didn't play as much over the weekend. Yeah, I think that it also accomplishes when you have those players something else. It forces those that maybe aren't working hard enough to, hey, right. there's somebody there to take my spot. As opposed to really, they have one extra D in Brian McKee who sits tonight and Brian Pellerin who's still got the bad wrist. And you know he'll have a spot when he gets back. Puck shot into the Moose zone. And now it's picked up by Clayton Young for the Arrows. Rolled it in behind the Moose net. Tip it in there to pursue. Hash marks right side. Trying to pick it up again. He's bumped in there by Kolstad. Tip it again in there. Crunched along the wall. He's watched in there by Moran. They go at it. Skate to skate. Puck still loose. Tip it doing a fine job of grinding along the wall. Here is Tip it. Cuts between the circles. His shot deflected. Now Clayton Young. He's wrapped up. Pushed into the corner by Hines. Hines got it along the fours, but Yo takes it away, trying to find Dave Tippett, but it's picked up by the Moose, and here they come to center ice. Kolstad, he'll cross the arrow blue line, trying to center that, but that's popped away by Valamont, but play whistle down on the offsides anyway, and we take a timeout. 11 and a half to play in the first, still no score here on the Arrows Broadcasting Network. Only Haynes Repair Manuals give you a photo-by-photo -photo guide to fixing your car. Anyone can do it. See Haynes, see how. In your face, hard hitting, sky walking, no regretting, sudden impact volleyball, women's volleyball. Yeah, you got a problem with that? Texas Tech and Texas A&M, Tuesday night at ten on HSE. You're watching HSE, the best team on TV. Tip it sits in the box. That's the reason for the whistle. Two minutes for slashing at 8:28 of this first period. 
Now the arrow shorthanded for the first time tonight, and that means Eves will come out with Chitaroni defensively. Shagorodsky and Valamont face off. One by the Moose, back to the line. Reed Larson, top of the slot. Now it's picked up Moran. Stefan Moran to Larson, his drive deflected wide. Now Larry Olin pitching down the left side, trying to motor it out in front. Valamont in there to have a look. They battle behind the net. Shagorodsky trying to clear. He's all tied up. Now Olin back to the line. Moran, a quick shot, snap, just done. And there was Gamble to get a right pad on it. And there is Chitteroni to get it out to center ice. Eves, who has a short and a goal, can't advance the puck, and Moran takes over. Puck back in Minnesota territory. Reed Larson to Stefan Moran. Back to Larson, and now center ice Larry Olin. Rolls it up the left wing boards for Snuggerud. Dumps it into Arrows territory. Out of the net, it was Gamble. It slowed along the boards. Moran in there to try and roll it along the wall to come to the line. Not out. Larson's got it. Top of the slot. Here's Moran again. Back to Reed Larson. Get it down. Left circle. Larry Olin cuts in behind the net. Drifting with a pass. It came out of foot. Score! It was jammed in there by Dave Snuggerud. A power play goal. Moose lead at 1-0. The Moose should not be scoring power play goals. They have not been a good power play unit, but the Arrows just couldn't stay with them here. The puck right around in front of the net and finally backhanded in. There's the good pass that comes out in front of the net, and it is popped in by Snuggerud. And it is 1 0 in favor of the Moose. And the Moose had gone through a uh, 0 for 25 power play drought until they finally uh, scored one. 19% on the road during power plays. And that's not very good, but they got one here. Here's Steve Jakes now, back the other way for the Arrows, who trail in this hockey game, one to nothing. Walk along the far corner, Townsend back to the line, a shot that's blocked, and it's picked up by John Young, and out to center they come. Here's Todd Harchie now, crosses the line, drops for Hatchnam, centered it, that hit a leg, and ricocheted wide of the net. Now a chance, Miller centered it, and just missed Hatchnam. Now the puck in behind as the Moose really starting to pick up the tempo now. Here is John Young. Feathers a pass for Atchinum, trying to work it through Townsend. Atchinum still skating pretty well. Will behind the net. A stuff shot. That hit Gamble. Freer now cuts in behind his net, and he'll turn it up the right wing boards. Freer backhanded out to Townsend, and he banks it to neutral ice, but the Moose are back. Arneal in there to try and work it away, and he gets it down the ice, and Draper comes out of the net for Minnesota. 9.40 here left in this first period, and a 1-0 Minnesota lead. Snuggerud with the power play goal. Here is Williams who cuts in, lets a shot go, and that's blocked by Gamble. Now the puck along the near side again. Williams cuts right side, feathers it over the far corner. First one there, Clayton Young for the Arrows. And he'll get it out to center ice. Dave Tippett, that's popped away by Kolstad. And the Arrows will try it again to get it out of their zone. Here is Mike Yo. Yo tipped it for Young, but that was a bit too far, and it's right back out to center ice. 9-10 to play here in this first period. Here's Dave Tippett now, a backhander that Draper got a glove on. Tip it behind the net. It's taken away by Williams, and he'll get it up ice. Here come the Minnesota Moose. Center ice, Ivan Corvo. Trying to move it up the right side. Picked away by Dave Tippett, and he'll launch it into Minnesota territory, and Colstad first one back. Moose lead at 1-0 here from the summit in Houston. Now center right, Dave Christian. Lost the handle on it. Picked up by Kolstad. That's a two-line pass. Two line play whistle down with 8.41 left in the first. Let's, drive it, let's, go. let's take a timeout. one nothing arrows. We're back after this. Scratchman here to demonstrate the Texas Lottery's newest scratch game, Double Doubler. Go scratch and match any three like amounts, and you could win. Then scratch the bonus box, and you could double the amount show. Or... Double Double the amount show. And now, I will reconform into my former self. Uh-oh. Play Double Doubler from the Texas Lottery. Okay, guys. One more time. Six shots on goal in this hockey game have belonged to Minnesota. They've outshot the Arrows 10-5, and they put one home. Here they come again, Larry Olam. Trying to get it around. Carl Valamont, he's wrapped up, but the Moose trying to hold the puck in at the right point, but cannot. Back goes Hextall to his own blue line. Picked up by Daniel Shank. Fired it along the boards, and now to center ice, though. Now the Dave Christian. Shank and Olin got the assist on the Snuggerud power play goal at 9.28 of this first period. 1-0 Minnesota. Back in center. Here's Dave Christian now. 
He'll fire it into the arrow zone. Dalamon is there. Turns it up for Eves. Picked away by Hextall. He'll retreat to his own zone. Watched again by Eves. Snuggerud circles at center ice. Snap the pass for Shank a bit too far. Gamble comes out of the net. He'll bank it over for Carl Dalamon. Dalamon up the left side. He'll get it up the center for Mike Maurice. Brings it into the zone. Lost the puck. Eves can't find the handle on it. And right now, the arrow's really having trouble trying to mount some offense and getting shots toward Tom Draper's way. They haven't really tested him yet here in this first period. They're working hard at him, but I think they're sluggish. I don't think they have their legs under him just yet. Here's Mike Maurice now. He'll get it out the center ice and back into the Minnesota zone. It goes Freer trying to pick up the puck. He crashed and burned along the near wall, and away the moose will come. It's John Young. Get it out the center ice for a breaking Todd Harchie. He stumbles a pass, but it's picked away by Curtis Hunt. And he'll just lob it into Minnesota territory. Moose back, Brad Miller. Leaves it up for Young. Get it to the line. Out the center ice. Puck on edge. It'll go all the way down. Arrow territory. Icing waved off. And Gamble will play it up for Curtis Hunt. On its center. They'll shoot the puck in. And they're going to call icing. If the Moose get there, they do. And we'll take a timeout. Seven minutes to play in the first. one nothing Minnesota. We're back after this. Attention all Aggie fans, relive the greatest moments in Texas A&M football history with Aggies, a century of football tradition. Follow the incredible journey of the tradition-rich A&M football program, the 12th man, legendary coach Dana X. Bible, Heisman Trophy winner John David Crow, and more. The whole story of Texas A&M football at your fingertips. Call 1-800-769-8843 to order this once-in-a-lifetime publication right now. Gig em, Aggies! Face off in the circle to the right side of Troy Gamble after the icing call, but you made a good point in that break, Russ, that that shouldn't have been an icing call. Well, I mean, Curtis Hunt shouldn't have snapped it from where he did. He got within six inches of the red line and let it fly. And as you said, if Minnesota touches it, it's icing. But if he had held it for about a split second more, four more inches, he'd have been at the red line, and the play would have been onside. And actually, there is a little grace, like, but not as much as Curtis Hunt had there. But sometimes the linesman will give you a little grace period as you hit it. There was too much white showing between yeah. the puck and the red line. If he waits just till he gets to the line and snaps it in, he's got an opportunity to have somebody go in there and create a play. Puck back in the moose zone now. Back to gather it in is Chris Hines. He'll roll it along the left side for Kolstad. Can't clear the zone. Tip it there along the half boards. He's wrapped up at the circle, though, and the Moose trying to clear it. Corvo held in at a right point by Foy. Second effort scrummed out the center ice, and here come the Moose two on one. Moran left side. Centered. Here's the drive. Score! Sean Williams, and it's now a 2 nothing Moose lead. Well, Williams just goes to the top corner. He took a great pass out in front. That two on one really started way back at the other end when the arrows get caught trying to pinch in at the blue line. Great pass made out in front through the slot and Williams with the left-handed shot just put it high as Gamble tries to play the angle on one side it goes to the other side and with the forehand shot high to the glove side and Troy Gamble who had no chance and Sean Williams puts Minnesota ahead here two to nothing well you talk about wanting to get off to a good start but right now you you mentioned the fact that the arrows have uh, worked hard but right now I think they're getting outplayed by the moose and they're making some tough mistakes and they're down to nothing. Oh, well, there's any question. Uh, the, the right team leads in, in terms of who's winning this hockey game on the ice, who's playing better. Uh, but the uh, arrows going to have to play from behind for change. Here's Mike Maurice. And we'll move it up through the neutral zone. Brings it into the Moose territory as he snaps a shot. Draper easily escorts that away. Sharnarodsky trying to control it into the near circle. Christian, he'll chip it to Shank. Get it out to center. Salamont there to pound it into Minnesota territory. Back is Hextall. Dave Hackstall in behind the net, stops on a dime, works it out to the right side for Christian. Can't clear it, though, and Eves is there to chop it back into the Minnesota zone. Maurice in a battle in there. He's tied up with Hackstall. Puck squirms to Eves. Now Maurice trying to center the puck. It came out in front. Olam is there, and we're going to get a penalty coming up for the Minnesota Moose, and the Arrows are going to be on the power play. 5.38 left in the first 2 nothing Moose, and a good chance here for the Arrows to get on the board. A very good chance for the Arrows to take advantage here if they can get right back in of this hockey game. Arrow's power play unit has converted on 10 of 42 chances. It's almost 24% at 7th best in the International Hockey League. They've been better on the road than at home, however. 16.7% at home and 33.3%, third best in the league, on the road. So it's a good opportunity here, but home has not been to their liking on the power play. 
face off is to the right of Minnesota's Tom Draper. Here's another look now at the Arrow umbrella. It'll be Freer, Townsend, Arneal, with Shargarovsky and Dave Tippett plays the point. And we'll watch this and we'll set up how this umbrella works. Tip it on the point for Shargarovsky. Roll it down for Arneal. Watch how the arrows now cycle it back up as Arneal came to the point. Here's a centering pass right in and Tippett had a chance. The way the arrows rotate it, they get the three man up high and they almost scored there. Now the puck picked up by Townsend, but it's rolled along the boards. Pinching will be Mark Freer. He's got it right point. His pass, though, was blocked by Sean Williams. Battle along the point there and the puck is out to center ice. If Draper doesn't see Tippett coming and get there to block the pass coming across his crease, then Tippett a moment ago is going to make this a 2-1 hockey game, but Draper got a piece of it. Offsides the call, play halted with a minute 27 left and the minor to Dave Haxtall for holding. 5.04 left in the first, 2-0 Minnesota. The goaltender has to do so much more than just stop the puck when it's shot at him. You'll, you'll occasionally, if you, if you come to a hockey game, you can't always hear him from up here, but you'll see him banging his stick on the ice. He's communicating with his a defenseman and his forwards letting him know who he wants them to take, what he plans to do. A lot of work for the goaltender besides just stopping the puck. Puck in the near corner in the Minnesota zone. It's picked up by Arneal. Now to Mark Freer. Left wing boards. He's bumped by Larson. He caught the puck up and away the moose come. They're shorthanded. They'll shoot it into the arrow zone. Tippett gave the puck away. Didn't see it actually as that backhander from Snuggerud goes wide. And now Tippett will race to center ice. A pass up the right side for Freer. Crosses the line. Freer trying to make his moves, but off the puck, Snuggerud is there, and he'll blast it out to center ice. Arrows were offsides there as Shagorodsky tried to hold it in, but play halted with 4.27 left in the first 2 nothing. the Moose lead. Don't want to uh, dwell on this stamina oh, thing sorry, uh, three here. games in three days, but it's it's clear right now the Minnesota Moose are a half step quicker than the Houston Arrows. They're getting a the loose puck a little faster. The Arrows are not able to turn the corner on them when they come charging into the zone and head towards the goal. They may yet, they don't necessarily have to get more and more tired as this game goes on they could get a second wind and snap out of it and start charging uh, flying through the ice as we uh, move on to this hockey game uh, I hope so because I don't think they could get any more slower than they are right now well you know Draper who has a just under three goals against average which isn't too bad but this is a guy you need to test though I mean, he really struggled opening night against Denver and quite frankly has been part of the reason the Moose have struggled this season and uh, the arrows just haven't tested him yet here is Eaves for Houston can't hold the puck in and the arrows who are short-handed now have to get back as the moose comes short at it left side it's Todd Harchie bumped off the puck by Valamont and there's Murray Eaves he'll take it away for the arrows up the right wing boards now up the gut center ice for Clayton Young hits the line Young left side sweeps it into the moose zone and misplayed by Draper a chance as the puck just squirts free of the arrows couldn't take advantage of that now Maurice trying to work it down for Young behind the net Young stuff shot right on as he makes the save. 3.36 left in the first, two nothing moves. Power play is over, not really a good power play for the Arrows. They had a chance early, very early, in the first several seconds of the power play when Tippett was out in front of Draper, but that centering pass, Draper got a piece of it, and Tippett never did catch up to the puck, was never able to put it home. So Draper made the play, that doesn't, that's an interesting one where it doesn't go as a shot on goal or as a save, but that clearly was a big moment in this uh, hockey game in this period on that power play and he made a big play. Minnesota still with the shots and goal advantage, 11 to 8. No advantage in the ice right now, no power play. Face off, one by the arrows, quick shot, sliced wide of the net by St. Cyr. Curtis Hunt trying to roll it behind for Mario Cittaroni. He's bumped by Moran. Now the puck comes to the near side for Clayton Young. Young in a battle, or excuse me, that St. Cyr and Curtis Hunt going at it. Cittaroni in there trying to dig it out as they're skate to skate along the boards. Puck Kick free, Chitteroni and Moran go at it. Now it's picked up by the Reed Larson for the Moose. He'll shoot it down the ice. This will be an icing call as Yo goes back, and icing is called. 2 nothing Moose, and we'll be back after this. People stopping by. With a new Exxon MasterCard, you can earn unlimited rebates for free gasoline. And the more you use it at Exxon, or for other purchases like meals, travel, shopping, the more free gasoline you'll earn. People stopping by. There's no annual fee either, so apply at Exxon now. And the first thing you'll earn is a free six-pack of Coca-Cola. Black now 
inside the Minnesota zone. It's picked up by the Moose. And out the center ice, they come. Moran up the right side. Williams crossed the line. Williams fired it into the far corner. Chitteroni after it. Trying to move it around for Moran. He's got it. Chitteroni fell as he lost it in the circle. Now Gamble has to come out and help his cause. It'll go out to Mario Chitteroni. And away he'll come. Right wing boards. Chitteroni now trying to get it through Miller as he dumps the puck in. Out of the net, Tom Draper. And he'll fling it up for Moran and bang it out to center ice. Two. 35 left in the first. And the arrows trailing in this hockey game by a score of two to nothing. Here's a pass, center ice. Chitteroni slides through the right side, looks in front, backhands one way wide. Now Arneal left side, a weak shot blocked in front by Brad Miller. Here's Dave Christian. He'll come to center ice for the Moose. Christian bumped off the puck and now Snuggerud. Get it for Daniel Shank, returns it for Snuggerud, roll off the stick. Arrows get it to the line, not out. Here's Larry Olam. He had it popped away by Chitteroni. Can he get it out of the zone? No, but Shargarovsky will skate it out. He missed Arneal with a pass and Hextall back into his own zone. Shoots it down the ice. This will be icing as Jakes is back. And play Halston. 2 0 in favor of the Moose with under two minutes to play. Arrows have come out here. The Snaps have a little sluggishly. They're trying to get their legs under them. The Moose with a couple of goals. The lead here by the score of 2 0. Snugger Root on the power play at 9 28. And then Williams at 13 44 and even strength. And so it's 2 0. But we talked earlier about the Arrows in holding leads. Playing from behind has not been a problem, Adam. The team has shown that they can get behind and then get it together and catch up quickly. Arrows with three shots on the power play. That previous power play and the trail is hockey game two nothing with a face off controlled by the Moose and shot out to center ice. Here's Scott Arneal now at center. He'll race it through the neutral zone and into Minnesota territory. Freer trying to find Arneal. It comes in front. There's Townsend trying to bat at it, but it comes to the line and out to center ice. Now the Moose, Young, up the left side for Blair Atchinham. He lost the puck, picked up by Freer and the arrows with a chance. Two on two. Townsend shoots and that puck deflected up and out of play. Townsend's been riding a pretty good streak lately. He's got a six game points scoring streak and has uh, played very, very well. One of the many veterans that the Arrows brought in here. One of the uh, very few hockey players from Kingston, Jamaica. Can you name another one? Oh, you had to test me. <laughs> I don't know. It's not. I, I, I don't think Pete Deneen has spent much time uh, scouting players down there. He does look good in a straw hat. It would be hard to convince uh, Glenn Hart and Steve Patterson to put up the money for a scouting trip to uh, Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs> they can try. Face off between Clayton Young and Stefan Moran. And the puck picked up by the Moose. Shot out the center ice and into arrow territory. Robinson goes back to retrieve it. And with 119 left in the first, arrows trailing 2-0. They'll get the puck out the center ice. Moose have it though, and now it's turned out. Moran tipped it ahead for Sean Williams down the right side. A centering pass. Gamble got over there, and we're going to get a penalty to Clayton Young as he manhandled one of the Moose and drilled him into the end wall. Play whistled down. And the Moose, who lead 2 nothing, are going to get another power play with a minute six left in the first. Let's take a look at the Arrows' upcoming schedule brought to you by Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. Wednesday, the Arrows are in Minnesota. That game is at 7 o'clock, taking on the Moose. And then in Friday and Saturday, the Phoenix Roadrunners are in town for a pair. Saturday's game, by the way, is uh, Hockey Halloween and the Village People. And uh, Russ, how do you look in white polyester and 10-inch high tops? Well, the, the thing that concerns me, I hope I get it cleaned in time, because it happened to be what I was wearing last night out on, on the town here in Houston. So I, I hope I get it back. That was you. Oh, yet. OK. Uh, I just want to make sure I get it back in time to wear it for Halloween. Uh, talked about the uh, Arrows having the ability to come back. They are 2-0 this year when falling behind at home. 2-0 on home ice after allowing the first goal and falling behind in the game. So it's a team that can come back. So what you're saying is this is Wiskowski's strategy. I hope so. I hope <laughs> it works. Buck is in the Arrows zone. Oh, yeah. by the Moose. More on right side. On the power play. Under a minute to go in the period. Moran down for Snuggerud. Get it back. Moran now. The Moose trying to cycle the puck along. It's down low. Snuggerud returns a centering pass block. Now the puck in behind the net. Moran trying to stuff it out in front. He wheels and deals behind the arrow cage. Still looking in front. Blasts it back on the half boards for Larson. Now here's a chance. Center top of the slot. All on the weak shot. Ricochet rebound. Gamble somehow kicked out out of there as there was Shank to blast one. And Gamble 
Campbell makes a scintillating save and kicks that out of there in the puck. They're down the ice. That's the save of the night. That has kept this a two-goal game. Now the Moose come again left to right. Olam shoots it into the arrow zone. Now it is Mark Freer. He tries to motor it in behind the net, and we're going to get another penalty coming up. And the arrows, I think, are going to be a pair of men down here. And being down 2 nothing, an interference call coming up. You don't want to call it like this. Well, that was not real smart. Especially with 12 seconds left in the period. That was just, you know, it was an opportunity there just to catch up to the puck and get it out of the zone and uh, get in and regroup and catch your breath. But instead, the penalty coming up to Chris Foy. And the interference is right. And uh, he's got the one black guy. And uh, uh, maybe that clouded his thinking a little bit here. That was compliments of. Uh, Friday's game in Las Vegas, but there's a few of those compliments of Vegas. <laughs> what a physical game that was. Well, so Troy Gamble and the Arrows have to hold him off the board here. 12.4 seconds to play in the first period. Already 2-0 in favor of Minnesota. One of their goals, a power play goal. And for uh, the final 12 seconds and then about a minute, almost a minute into the second period, it'll be a two-man advantage for the Moose. Now they got the Minnesota's got... Six guys out Six there. skaters on the ice. No wonder right. they're leading 2 nothing. That's right. They can play that way. Now Moran will come off and finally get the final 12 seconds played here. Minute seven remaining. And a minor to Clayton Young. And a face off in the circle to the right side of Troy Gamble. Sticks down. Drop of the puck. It's controlled by the Moose. Reed Larson left side. Slides it down low for Shea. Back to the line. Larson gets set. Trying to center it. Here's the drive. Gamble got the toe on it and makes a great save. Two seconds remaining in the first period. And Troy Gamble, boy, did he have to get over there. The puck came from Shank down low. It was deflected. And look at how Gamble gets over there from Williams. Uh, Sean Williams, who has a goal already in this hockey game. He was on the doorstep. And Gamble showing some great flex, uh, flexibility getting over there. An outstretched save. And he has the puck tucked away. Picture of concentration. Troy Gamble and a face-off to his left in the near circle in the zone. And top of the puck. And the buzzer is going to sound. And the arrows. Well, not the greatest first period. Of for sure about that. They uh, never really did get out of the gate, and they trail in this hockey game by a score of 2 to nothing. When we return, we'll have more from the Summit right after this. 2 nothing Moose. All across Houston, Americans are getting ready for professional hockey. This fall at the Summit, the Houston Arrows inaugural season takes off. Already bought my arrow season tickets. Thank you for buying season tickets and joining the Arrow Force. Arrows coach Terry Raskowski gets the team ready for action. Yeah, boss, here's the scoop. Season tickets start at $100, and you can get them by calling 627-ARROW. That's 627-AERO. Scratch Man here to demonstrate the Texas Lottery's newest scratch game, Double Doubler. You'll scratch and match any three like amounts, and you could win. Then stretch the bonus box, and you could Double the amount shown. Or... Double, double the amount shown. And now, I will reconform into my former self. Uh-oh. Play Double Doubler from the Texas Lottery. Okay, guys. One more time. The name of the game is Speed. Flying on steel blades across an arena of ice. Stopping on a dime. Houston has a new way of flying. They're called the Arrows, and they're Houston's newest pro team. They'll be earning their wings every day. Bringing you thrills and chills will be their goal. Phoenix battles Houston Friday night at 7, live on HSE. Adam Gordon along with Russ Small and 
a 2 nothing hockey game in favor of the Minnesota Moose. The Moose 30 seconds. starting it off at 9.28. His first on the power play from Larry Olam and Daniel Shank. And then they made it 2 nothing on Sean Williams' goal, his sixth of the year from Stefan Moran and Ivan Corvo. That goal came at the 13.44 mark. And that is a 2 nothing lead in favor of the Minnesota Moose. But I'll tell you what, a guy that's been playing some pretty good hockey right now for the Houston Arrows, Graham Townsend, he's standing by with Russ Small. Russ? Adam, thank you very much. And you're right, Graham Townsend has been playing some terrific hockey for the Arrows. It was not the best first period of the year for the Arrows. Minnesota came out and played well. Well, I think you guys are kind of feeling the schedule over this weekend. Well, you know, we don't like to make excuses. Um, there's no excuse for the way we're playing tonight. Um, if we want to be at the top of our division and top in the league, we've got to play much better than we're showing tonight. What's the difference out there? It seems to me they're about a half step quicker than you guys, but does it go beyond that? I think it's simply that they, uh, they want it more right now, and we've got to understand that just because they're in the bottom of the league doesn't mean that uh, we, you know, we can come in and take them lightly. We've got to play just as hard against them as we do against the first place club. Well, the interesting thing is, as we've talked a lot about having leads and not being able to hold them, overlooked a little bit in that is the fact that when you guys have fallen behind, you've been able to come back and grab one or two points. Uh, here this year, you're 2-0 and oh in this building after falling behind, so we know you can do it. You know, you know hockey's a game where you, you let up for, for five or ten minutes, you could be two, three goals down, and um, we've got to learn that the game is 60 minutes long, and it's an old cliche, but you've got to understand that you know every shift counts out there, and uh, that's why we've been getting ourselves into trouble, and it happened tonight, and we're going to have to dig ourselves out of a hole again. And for yourself, uh, you and, and line mates, uh, not too bad. You had a good scoring chance or two there uh, in the first period. You had a pretty good shot that uh, the save was made on. Yeah, again, you know, I'd, I should have maybe passed that puck over to Scott O'Neill. He was wide open, and, um, you know, I'm pressing a little bit too much, I think, tonight. I'm a little bit too nervous for some reason, and um, I've got to just relax and get back into playing my game. That's taking the body and going hard to the net, letting the other two guys do all the, all the dangling with the puck. And are you the only hockey player from Kingston, Jamaica, or are there anybody else? As far as I know, I am. Yeah. <laughs> we thank you very much. Graham, I know you guys are going to come back here and make this a hockey game uh, on the rest of this afternoon, so good luck. Well, thank you very much. just want to say hi to my friends in Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, that will be watching tonight. Uh, that's Graham Townsend. 2 nothing Minnesota leads the Arrows, but only 20 minutes in the books here. We'll have more for you from the Summit. Stick around for more at HSE. a busy day, all you really want to do is just get home, check the paper, toss your coat, get to the den, flip on the TV, sit in your favorite chair, take your shoes off, loosen your tonic, grab the remote control, kick back and unwind. What? You don't have a remote control? Uh-oh. It's kind of hard to unwind when you have to keep getting up and sitting down to change the channels. In fact, it's exhausting, not to mention missing a lot of what your cable system has to offer. So call your local cable company today. Take control, get the remote and unwind. Brought to you by the Weather Channel and your local cable operator. The Steelers and the Cardinals come to play on TNT, the funny system, where the two-minute warning means pick up your body parts and attend to the wounded. And that's why on Sunday night, we come to play TNT, the Steelers and the Cardinals. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Sunday night NFL on TNT. Listen to Mark Kessler mornings on Z107.5 to win NFL on TNT prizes. for some sports this November? Well, gobble up some NBA action with the Dallas Mavericks and San Antonio Spurs as they fill up the nets. Then, feast your eyes on women's action as they dish it out with the women's preseason NIT. Need something cool for dessert? Well, spoon down some hockey action with the Arrows. Still hungry? He's got We'll pile up a full plate of sports this November on HSE. Golfers, get ready to tee off on a great offer. Maybe you're looking for where to take your next golf vacation or that one tip to lower your score. All that and more in each issue of the new Corporate Golfer magazine. Every month, interviews with the greatest names in golf, tournament previews, and profiles of the top golf courses in your area. If you order now, you'll receive free the audio cassette How to Master the Mental Game of Golf by Dr. Fran Pirazzolo. That's 12 great issues of Corporate Golfer and the tape are yours for just $15. Call 800-380-GOLF and get on top of your game today. Welcome back to the Summit in Houston. Adam Gordon along with Russ Small. We're in the first.
first period intermission in a 2 nothing hockey game, Russ, in a, in a period that uh, I think Terry Ruskowski knows his team's got to play better. Well, I'm not going to fool anybody. There's no fooling everybody. It was not a good period by the Houston Arrows. Graham Townsend sat here with me just a few moments ago and admitted that. I don't think he had to admit it. Everybody here in the building knows it. But we've got 40 minutes to play in this game. I think clearly the, the key maybe to the rest of this afternoon and evening is going to be what happens in the first minute and a half in the second period. The Moose are still on a two-man advantage. And even after the first comes back, they'll still have a one-man advantage. The first couple of shifts here or rushes up ice on this two-man advantage for Minnesota in the second period may tell the story. I don't want to think what might happen if we fall behind three goals here early in the second period. Two goals scored by the Moose in that first period. Let's take a look at those now. This is the first one that was scored, and uh, it was the power play goal. And like you said, the Moose didn't score many on the power play this year. Well, Snuggerud gets this one, and uh, both goals are goals that come from in close. This one comes from out in behind the net. Little flip out in front. The backhander goes high to the glove side on Troy Gamble on the power play. It's a goal for the Minnesota Moose. And the other goal that will come up was also a goal that came from in close. And Gamble didn't have a, you know, a whole lot of chance here. Uh, Williams just took the great centering pass as Gamble comes over to his right the puck goes over to his left and it's just flipped right up into the corner you can't fault Troy Gamble they uh, pinched in on that second one remember with the other blue line and uh, it resulted in a two on one break for Minnesota and they capitalized okay let's take a look at the first period stats brought to you by James Coney Island restaurants the shots on goal in that first period 14 to 8 in favor of the Minnesota Moose and that translates to 12 saves for Troy Gamble and 8 saves for Tom Draper power plays well Minnesota 1 of 1 but like like you say, two-man advantage to start the second period. The arrows are 0 of 1 penalty situations. You can see the moose are one penalty for two minutes, while the arrows three for six. But I want to talk real quickly. You know, you look at those eight saves that uh, Tom Draper's had to make. They haven't had to be. They haven't been tough saves. No, he has not been tested uh, at all. Uh, special teams: one power play chance, one goal for Minnesota. The uh, arrows right now are going to be killing a two-man disadvantage here as the second period starts. Again, I think this is going to be a key moment or two in this hockey game. Yeah, and are you, are you surprised that by now the Arrows haven't found their legs? No, I, I think right here Terry Ruskowski's talking to them between periods. They've taken some deep breaths. The guys have settled down now. They know what they got to do. They know what Minnesota's going to come at them with. They're down two goals. I think if they don't find them pretty soon, there's going to be trouble. But uh, no, I think sometimes it takes the intermission break and the guys could come out flying here in just a matter of a couple of minutes. All right, it's 2-0 here in the first period intermission. The Moose leading the Houston Arrows, and we'll be back with more with Steve Patrick. Patterson right after this. We'll go back to more ice hockey in just a moment. I'm Kevin Eschenfelder in the clubhouse with Southwest Airlines Sports Break. Let's talk NFL football here on this NFL Sunday. And we start at the Superdome. Saints leading in the second quarter, 17-7, looking for more. Everyone's looking for the football, and Toby Wright comes away with it. Whistle did not blow, and Toby Wright will go 98 yards for the touchdown and make it a 17-14 game. New Orleans on top. This was a day of big plays, huge plays. As a matter of fact, on the ensuing kickoff, here comes Tyrone Hughes. Finds a seam. Hughes gets a block, and he takes it 92 yards. The New Orleans Saints go up 24-14. They go on to win it 37-34. Also in that game, Robert Bailey, a 103-yard punt return, longest in NFL history. Dallas and Arizona tied at 14 early third quarter. I'm Kevin Eschenfelder in the clubhouse. We go back to the summit in just a moment. Hi, I'm Randy White, here with Tony Dorsett and Special Olympian Jim Myers with details about a spectacular sports event. We're talking about the 10th Annual Dallas Morning News Sports Celebrity Carnival, presented by Pacific Care, benefiting Texas Special Olympics. Join us on October 25th from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 at Dallas Market Hall to meet great sports stars. Come join us for the Sports Celebrity Carnival. Purchase tickets in advance through Ticketmaster or at the door. Check the Dallas Morning News for details. It's time to jam. Can you dig it? The Longhorns look to stampede into Lubbock and trample out a win. But the Red Raiders are ready. They got the guns up. Texas and Texas Tech, Saturday at noon, live on HSE. When you want the real story, go to the clubhouse. Get into the action and discuss the hottest topics with informed hosts and some of sports' biggest names. Live on Clubhouse Special Edition. Monday nights at 7 on HSE. 
again, everybody. Welcome back to the summit between periods. I'm Russ Small with the president of the Houston Arrows, Steve Patterson. Early in the season yet, Steve, but uh, what a fun time everybody's having following the Arrows. I think it's been a great uh, reception here in Houston by all the fans so far. Uh, Houston's a great hockey town. Uh, we're averaging uh, close to 12,000 people a night here in the in the summit, so we're really enjoying it so far, and I think most of the fans are too. You got the early weeknight uh, starting times, and uh, here on a Sunday afternoon, the four o'clock starting time certainly conducive to families. Well, that was part of our intention. We figured if you go at four o'clock, the game's over by seven, you can get home by eight or so and have everybody in bed and ready to go to work or to school the next day. Let's talk about the ice here in the facility of the summer. We had a little problem last week uh, and some continuing problems. Is the building just still learning how to uh, work the ice? Do they need a new compressor? Well, just what's going on? Well, I think the, uh, the problem with the game that we missed against Atlanta was really one of a lot of uh, circumstances that uh, all came together at one point in time. We had a lot of heat in the building because of unusual temperatures. We'd had a show the night before, and uh, they were trying to shave down the ice, take some of this paint off of it and uh, for that show and that caused some of the problems but I really don't look for it to be a, a problem long term here in the summit they're good operators here they have been for a number of years and uh, I look forward to having a good season from here on out. Now your background here in Houston and everybody knows Steve Patterson is uh, one of the architects of the world champion Houston Rockets in running a basketball club and now running a hockey club is it completely similar or are there some differences? Well, I think there's a little bit difference in the, in the cultures of the of the two sports, but other than that it's it's the sports business. Uh, it's still radio and television and cable and uh, and selling tickets. So in many ways uh, the businesses are very very similar. Speaking of selling things whether it's tickets or souvenirs, whatever it is the Arrows have had to sell, the fans have just scooped them up like crazy. You're right, Russ. We have to keep reordering merchandise like crazy. I think uh, we're going to be up there for one of the all-time records in uh, IHL uh, merchandise sold this year certainly and uh, we will be there right along with Detroit and Chicago and uh, we already doubled the uh, the former IHL record in terms of season ticket dollar sales so uh, the city has embraced us uh, uh, with open arms and, and really done a great job supporting the club. I'll give you five bucks for that Arrows tie right now. <laughs> it's gonna cost you a little more than that Russ. <laughs> the president of the Arrows that's Steve Patterson. Thank you Steve. I'm Russ Small. Now let's go back to Adam Gordon. Thank, thanks Russ. Two nothing hockey game here in the first period intermission. The Moose leading the Arrows by a score of two to nothing. And again, when we get back, uh, the Arrows will uh, have their hands full. If they're going to be down two men, it'll be a five on three situation in favor of the Moose. And like Russ Small and I talked about, that is probably going to be the key point in this hockey game how the Arrows contain that. Now, one thing the Arrows have done well this year has been their penalty killing. It's uh, one of the best in the IHL. And, uh, at, and quite frankly, it played well last night as uh, they went. They held the Peoria Rivermen 0 for 5 on the power play. Let's take a look at the scoring summary in that first period. And uh, both Minnesota goals, first one at 928, a power play goal. Dave Snuggerud from Larry Olam and Daniel Shank. And the Moose led it 1 to nothing. They made it 2 to nothing at 1344 when Sean Williams took a, the Ivan Corville pass, tipped it behind Troy Gamble. Williams notched his sixth goal of the year. Morin and Corvo get the assist. And it's 2 nothing after a period of play. And again, the Shots on goal 14-8 in favor of the Minnesota Moose. And the scoring summary brought to you by Columbia HCA Health Corps Corporation. Again, our score from the summit in Houston. It's the Minnesota Moose 2 and the Houston Arrows nothing. And we'll have more after this on the Arrows Broadcasting Network. Take this a via Arch Rocker 382. First, just let me slip on this little beauty. Don't bother. Consumer Reports rated this one highest in shock absorption and support. Consumer Reports. It's the magazine that arms you with brand names, model numbers, facts, and figures to make smart buys every day. So you need to read it every month. Your subscription's just a toll-free phone call away. Subscribe and get 12 issues, including the April Auto issue. You'll also receive as a bonus the 1995 Buying Guide, all for only $22. Plus two free books, the 1994 Buying Guide and How to Clean Practically Anything. That's a $65.80 value for just $22. You save 66%. Hi. Yeah, where's your Panasonic CTP 3180SF? Ah, Consumer Reports? Consumer Reports. They're right over here. Great. Consumer Reports once a month makes you one tough customer. 
your face. Hard hitting. Sky walking. No regretting. Sudden impact volleyball. Women's volleyball? Yeah. You got a problem with that? Texas Tech and Texas A&M. Tuesday night at 10 on HSE. SWC stands for Southwest Conference. And to catch all the exciting news from Lubbock to Houston, Austin to Dallas, and all points in between, this week in the SWC is the place. Wednesday at 5.30 on HSE. Welcome back to the Summit. Adam Gordon along with Russ Small. A 2-0 hockey game as we're moments away from starting this second period and Russ I know we beat beat it to death as far as uh, this power play situation but I mean this is a point where quite frankly the Moose could be up for nothing early in the second period well when the period starts here in a moment or two they're going to have a two man advantage on the ice and you just can't get a bigger disadvantage than two men and so the arrows are going to be down two goals down two skaters and it's a key Ice. Now, you know they've just spent the intermission saying, come on, guys, we can come back one goal at a time. We can come back. We can win this game. That's what our plan is. Get your legs under you. Take a deep breath. We know you're tired. I'll give you a couple of days off. I'll give you some time to rest, but let's go out and play 40 minutes. So they've had a pep talk here from Terry Roskowski in the intermission. The pep talk will pay off if they can come out and make something happen here early in the second. If they give up a power play goal here in the first minute and a half of the second period, I think that pep talk is completely forgotten. You know, you talk about the pep talk and, and Terry Ruskowski I think said it best when he was talking about the hockey game after last night and he said there was no life in the locker room after every period it seemed like it was quiet and it was dead and there was no emotion no energy and throw in one factor tonight also with the team not getting off to the good start it seems like the crowd is a little laid back tonight yeah they're still dead out here the crowd is dead the players are dead uh, they need to, you know which came first the chicken or the egg uh, will the crowd here if they get into it will it bring the players with them or if the players start making some things happen on the ice will that wake up the crowd uh, all I know is this the crowd is paying its way to, to get in here nobody's paying the crowd the guys you're paying are the arrows the guys down here in the uniforms so they're the guys it's up to them to get the crowd into the game and uh, hopefully they'll do it here we only played 20 minutes it's two nothing Minnesota Moose Troy Gamble in the pipes to our left Tom Draper to our right you know Troy Gamble I thought had a very strong first period you know I don't think you can fault him really on the two goals he gave up he gambled on the Williams one where he went down but I mean he didn't have much choice well it's a two on one and it was a power play goal where the puck comes out from behind the net and just plops in front of the backhander so no I don't think you can fault him for either of those goals on the other hand uh, Draper's got a shutout going but hasn't really been tested it's up to the arrows forwards uh, to put some testers on him here but again we remind you as this period starts don't adjust your set it's five for the moose and three for the arrows 54 seconds left in the Clayton Young minor 148 left in the Foy minor and I'll tell you what maybe the arrows would have traded in their skates for some work boots here to start this period and that's what they're going to have to do as we start period number two of the moose on the power play Christian he'll carry it over to the near side brought in along the boards by Reed Larson drifting down now drops it for Daniel Shank top of the slot here is Christian looks for the pass here Shank one time shot right on stop by Gamble and Robinson there to pounce on the rebound and clear it out of harm's way now Christian again right point works it down the left side for Moran Michelle Moran Stefan Moran rather base of the circle gets it back to the line Christian for Moran hash marks right side looks down low he's got Williams camped in front can't get it to him now here's Larson he's got a howitzer he drifts back top of the slot looks for the shot cross ice pass Moran now it's back to the line Christian Larson still waiting arrows doing a good job here's the drive blocked in front another drive stop rebound score Daniel Shank boy Troy Gamble could only do so much he stopped three shots and then finally the fourth one was put in and it's now a three nothing moose lead a power play goal they were paying a lot of attention to Reed Larson and the Howard said you are right Larson after not shooting not shooting not shooting finally lets one go Gamble makes the save but can't control the rebound it comes out in front and Daniel Shank puts it home the power play advantage here. And 
and it is three to nothing. And it came during the two man advantage and Foy still has 56 seconds left on his minor. So two power play goals and an even strength goal on the moose lead it by a score of three to nothing. And yes, now it's a five on four power play for the moose. Larry Olim tips it out to center. Here's Ivan Corvo trying to bring it ahead. Trying to bring it ahead. Should have centered that and Gamble works that away. Now on the right wing boards, Larson centered it. Corvo turns, shoots, ripped it wide of the net. Now the moose are just teeing up on the arrows. Here's a puck now, left side. Ashenham rolls it down for Corvo. Ashenham in the corner, trying to find Corvo. Young, bumped by Shagorodsky. Puck comes in front. Shagorodsky trying to pop it free. It goes for Young. John Young along the right wing boards, pulls up at the hash marks. Now cuts into the circle, works the give and go with Corvo. Comes back to the right point. Larson lets the shot go right on. Gamble blocker save, rebound, Gamble save. Another chance in front, and that was work free. So Troy Gamble standing on his lips right now and not getting a lot of help out in front. Now the puck in the near corner. Puck center. Oh, the drive. That may have raised the side of the net. Here is Arnie Hills. The penalty will go over. Team to by the side, and now Chris Foy off to the races. One man to beat Larson. Foy crosses the line, drops the pass for Freer. He can't center it as Olam works it away. Two minutes gone by in the second period in a 3-0 hockey game. Moose lead it. Curtis Hunt trying to center it. Can't do it. The puck comes out to center. Now Jake's trying to work it away from Atchinham. They're in a battle on the fire boards. They're tied up along the far wall, and now it is Tippett. He's kind of lodged in his breezes, but the Moose come away three on one, but they're offside. Now we've got a fight between Jake's and Atchinham. They've dropped the gloves, and this gets the crowd going. Maybe this is what it's going to take. Jake's has the right free, trying to pound to the side of the head of Atchinham. Now working on the lid, he's got it off. Atchinham strikes back with a solid left hand. Jake's trying to fire back. They're all going at it now. They're just jostling at center ice. And finally, the linesman get in there. But I'll tell you, I've seen it many times. A good bout like this gets the crowd going, gets the team going. This is the shot in the eye of the arrow's knee. We'll, we'll sort it out when we return. Two and a half, played in the second. Three nothing, Moose back after this. This label tells you it's 100% cotton. This label tells you it's 100% real cheese. And this label tells you it's 100% low fares. Always check the label. Southwest, the low fare airline. Southwest Airlines wrote the book on low fares. And it's available in paperback. Low fares on every seat, every flight, everywhere we fly. Southwest, the low fare airline. And I think you're right when you talk about the crowd finally being into something here. Uh, good little battle at center ice, and uh, Jake's, I think, got the best of uh, Atchinham. Atchinham got a good shot or two in under his eye from uh, Steve Jake's. I think he's going to have a little shiner there before the game is through. And they both go for fighting coincidental penalties. We still skate by the side. But maybe everybody's woken up a little bit here. It's 3 nothing. Moose, 17 and a half to play in the second. Ooh, Draper got a little dangerous as he fired one away and almost gave it to Young with Draper caught out of the cage. And now Christensen on his derriere. Here's a puck along the fireboards as it's worked along there by Foy, and he's all tied up with Snuggerud. Now the puck picked up by Hunt. Gets it up to Chitteroni left side. To the line, not out. Held in by Hackstall. Quick shot. Stick save made by Gamble. Puck to the line. Now it's Brad Miller. Gently rolls it in behind the arrow cage for Shank. Trying to get it to Snuggerud. He's battling in there with Foy as Foy gives him the lumber. Now the puck back to Hackstall. Right on that. Ricochet on to Gamble. And Tippett able to clear that down the ice. Back into Moose territory. You can say you're going to play better all you want, Adam. You still got to go out and do it. And right now, the arrows are not doing it. And here's Snuggerud on a breakaway. Shoots. Gamble with the glove save. And once again, Troy Gamble comes up nice as he's had to many times tonight. Well, again, the moves are just quicker to the puck. And this is a simple pass right up through center ice. And Gamble has to come up with a big save on Snuggerud, who already has a goal in this game. He scored the first Minnesota goal. Side on Gamble. Troy makes the save. When you get a break in like that, you know which team is a little quicker, and you know which team is putting the pressure on. Seven to nothing. Shots on goal in this period favoring Minnesota as the puck is deflected up and over the glass behind Troy Gamble. All right, three nothing moose, and we'll be back from the summit right after this. 
Luxor Las Vegas, you can dine at one of seven world-class restaurants, pamper yourself at a luxurious European spa, or explore the mysteries of the pyramid in a multi-million dollar virtual reality adventure. So we thought we'd show you your room now, because you probably won't be seeing much of it later. Luxor Las Vegas, get into it. We've played three minutes and 19 seconds of the second period. The Moose leading the arrows three to nothing. And here's a puck back to the line. Hines lets the shot go. Gamble save. Rebound hit the inside of the post. Troy Gamble must have grabbed some saran wrap and had it in front of the cage because that thing hit the inside of the post and came right back out. And it all started from the draw. Yeah, they just work it right off the draw. And eventually, uh, Ivan Korovo gets that opportunity. Shot is taken from up near the point. Goes through everybody's legs. Gamble makes the save. The backhander by Korovo off the post. It is clearly beaten Gamble. But fortunately, he turns, looks behind him, just hoping that maybe he'll still see the puck. It comes right back towards him, and he covers it up. Big, big break for the Arrows. Face off in the circle to the left of Gamble. Arrows win the draw. Here's Carl Valamont. He'll roll it to the near side for Townsend. Now the puck picked up by Valamont. Sends it back Townsend. Now for Freer. He tries to move it through Williams. He's run off the puck and picked up Robinson again for the arrow. Shoots it into Minnesota territory. The arrow's still without a shot on goal in this period. And the puck comes out to center and into arrow territory. Back goes Robinson now with four minutes elapsed in period number two. Three nothing Minnesota. Here is Townsend. Drills it into the Minnesota zone. Comes squarely out in front, but Freer couldn't catch up to it. Now the puck to the line on out. Valamont. Bumped by Morset. Here's the puck back. Arneal tries to feather one out in front. That ricochets wide and into the near corner. Battle along for Townsend. He tries to move it down for Freer. He's all locked up in the end wall with John Young. Freer still working hard. He's muscled with the puck. And finally, he'll fire it to an open corner. And there is Hines to clear it to the line. And down the ice, it'll go. This will be an icing call as Hunt is back to touch. And we've played four and a half nice minutes in this second the period. And the Moose lead at 3 nothing. You know, Adam, we talked a lot about the fact that it's the third game in three days. But I think a factor that goes along with that is the nine and a half days they had off before this three-game stretch. Remember the game last weekend that had to be canceled here last Sunday because of the ice? They wanted to play it Monday, but then the league stepped in and canceled that game. So they went a week and a half without a game. And no matter how much you practice and how much you lift weights and how much you work out, you can, in a week and a half, fall a little bit out of game shape. And then play three games in two and a half days? That's pretty tough to do. Absolutely. Faceoff will be to the right of Draper. And then you throw in someone like Maurice, who hasn't played at all. And these are his first three games of the year, and he's out there with St. Cyr and Eves. Here is Maurice now in behind the net, trying to feather a pass along the wall, picked up by uh, Archie. Todd Archie will get it out the neutral, and here come the Moose. Young trying to trample in on the arrow zone, but there was Hunt to shoot at the center. Al Harchi again, tipped it back to the arrow blue line. Hunt is there to blast it off the glass and out the center. Reed Larson turns it around for Minnesota. Here is Morissette down the left side. Wide shoots and that deflected wide of the net. Puck comes out in front. Maurice lost it. Picked up by St. Cyr. Motoring in behind the arrow twine and up ice he'll come. Here is St. Cyr galloping through the neutral zone. Hits the line. St. Cyr trying to muscle it in there. He's drilled off the puck and here come the moose. Two on two. Christian crosses the line. Drops it back. Harchi a drive and a blocker saved by Troy Gamble. Now the puck in the corner. Here's Christian to the line but it came out the center as Olam couldn't hold it in and we'll take a time out. 3-0 Moose. 1434 to play here in the second. We're back after this. It's time for the Texas Lottery Winner's Circle. A hats off salute to everyone who plays the game of Texas. Lucky Texans are already winning, so visit your local Texas Lottery retailer. Play the game of Texas, and maybe we'll see you in the winner's circle. 
nothing the moose leaded russ and boy they're just getting the job done they are just getting it the jit done is right snuggerud and williams in the first period it was two nothing early in the second period shank a two-man power play advantage the shots on goal in this period well the arrows don't have one minnesota has nine Puck back in the moose zone and it'll bounce out to center ice Here's the puck shot into the moose zone. Back goes Larry Olam now to gather in the puck. And he'll roll it off the boards and get it out to Shank. Now here come the moose again. Three on two. Christian gets it down. Snuggeru dropped it back. Hextall shoots. Block Gamble. It's behind him. The puck trickles in. It's on the line. And Gamble has it covered up. But the question is, did that completely go over the line or not? Well, the answer is no, because the line has not come on. But I'll tell you what. Two of the last couple of shots for Minnesota have been behind Gamble. This could easily be 4 nothing. It was a couple of trailers that had an opportunity there to score. Good job in the crease by the wow. by the defense and then by uh, Troy Gamble. Was it, who, got, who snuck in there and got that buck right in the crease? He goes in behind Gamble. Could easily have gone in off the back of Troy Gamble. That Chitteroni that I came think in it's there. Mario Chitteroni indeed who comes in there and just uh, gets a puck, uh, gets a stick on the puck and stops him from going in. So it remains three to nothing. Puck down the arrow zone off the draw. It is Shiarotsky, and now the arrows come to center. Freer trying to bounce it ahead. Christian knocked him off the puck. Now it goes to an open wing along the fireboards. It's jumped on by Hackstall for the move. Sliced through Shagarovsky. Valamont back to pick up the puck, though, and he'll gently roll it up for Graham Townsend. Right wing boards in his own zone, and he'll race to center. Here comes Townsend. Trying to loop it ahead for Arneal. It misses everybody, and Draper comes out of the net. Now rolls it to your side. Picked up. Here's a centering pass. Arneal back. That got a piece of it, and the puck comes to center. Well, a great scoring opportunity. Arneal had a chance, but couldn't convert. Now the arrows back in their own zone. Valamont get it up for Arneal, and it's loose in the loose zone. Three nothing, Minnesota. 13:20 to play in the second. Puck in the arrow zone. Gamble out of the net, and here is Oleg Shagarovsky. He'll cut its way to the right side. Bounce one ahead for Townsend, a bit too far, and Colstad rips it into the arrow zone once again. Seven minutes played here in period number two, and a Three nothing hockey game. Here is Graham Townsend now. As the arrow's trying to get something generated offensively. Puck over the blue line. Here is Shagarovsky. Left side. Left a shot go. It takes a weird hop off the glass in behind the net. Now a chance. Arneal trying to bust one in there, but it's popped away. And here come the moose once again. They bring it up. It was Korovo, but Shagarovsky there to knock it away. And now a chance for St. Cyr. Hooked a bit on the play, and uh, the arrows are offsides. 12.42 to play here in the second period. We take a timeout. Three nothing moose, and we're right back after this. Where do you go when you want to have fun? I'm out on the courts every chance I get. I play soccer and little league and basketball and football. I go fishing with my grandson. But first, we go to Oshman Super Sports, <laughs> where I can try all the newest clubs right here in the store. This store is bigger than. Lake Travis. One store has all the fun. Oshman Super Sports. 3 nothing. Here in the second period, the Arrows still trying to get something generated offensively, Russ. 12.42 to play in the period, and you're right, they've generated nothing, but there's time yet if they can get something going. Maybe it'll take a fluke goal to get them on the board and get them going. Yeah, it's not like they're getting stoned by Draper. In fact, they have just the one shot if indeed uh, Draper got in front of that Arneal one, and that's about the only shot on goal the Arrows have put, and it was a good one. Now it is Miller. Launches the puck into the Arrow zone. Hunt is there. He'll blast it off the wall and back to the neutral zone it goes. Turned around. Here's Corvo galloping into the zone. He's knocked off the puck. Chris Foy is there and missed everybody with a pass, and Reed Larson trying to turn it around, but Eves there for the Houston Arrows give it over to St. Cyr roll it into the moose zone Larson trying to clear he will this will go all the way down the ice and now Gamble comes out of the net and he'll start the rush he notices the line changes he tried to quickly move it up ice but pass wasn't handled and uh, it's brought back in by Morissette it's David Morissette dropped it back to the line Miller the drive blocked by Hunt he'll move it ahead for Mike Maurice up the right wing boards for St. Cyr trying to split the knee St. Cyr ready to go Mike Stern shoots it's stopped Draper loose it, but the backhander, and Draper makes the save. And St. Cyr is going to draw a penalty on one of the moose, and the arrows are going to go on the power play with 11 and a half to play.
play in the second three nothing Minnesota. This is what you call Adam a good penalty. A good penalty for the Minnesota Moose. Yeah they're going to give the arrows a two, man, a two minute advantage but without the penalty St. Cyr is home free and has a good opportunity to be the With the penalty he almost scored. The penalty here on a veteran Reed Larson. He'll go out for hooking many years with Detroit in the National Hockey League and a couple of other teams as well. Uh, really that's a veteran move Adam. They got beat. St. Cyr had the breakaway and there's a moment where you say well you know, we'll take our chance on uh, the penalty killing unit rather than give up this break in opportunity on our goaltender. So Larson out for two and if the arrows are going to get back in this game it's a power play that could do it. Face off in the circle to the left side of Tom Draper. Freer, Neal and Young with Tippett and Shagorodsky. You know at home this year the arrows averaging 3.7 goals per game on the road five goals per game. They've been a much better scoring team on the road. Arrows win the draw. Here is Shagorodsky pitching down the right side. Slides a puck for Freer. Base of the right circle. He's creamed in the corner. Now it is picked up by Arneal. Base of the right circle in the Moose zone. Arneal trying to feather one along the boards. It comes to Oleg Shagorodsky. He winds. Shoots. Blocked in front of Draper. Had to get up on that rebound and cover it up and he'll hold on. As I recall earlier on the uh, power play for the Arrows, they had zero shots on goal. This, their second power play opportunity, the shot by Shagorodsky, which is stopped by Draper, I think is their first power play shot on goal uh, on the evening. A couple more like that, get some people screening out in front, maybe get a deflection, get any kind of a opportunity out in front, they might just get one here. They trail 3 0, 11 18 to play in the second period. 141 left in the Larson minor. Freer against Snuggaroo to the left of Tom Draper. Now they're starting to test him a little bit here in the last minute or so. Shagorodsky, top of the slot, rolls it down for Arneal. Arrows on the power play, cycle the puck down low for Freer, trying to circle around from Hackstall. Arneal, top of the slot now for Shagorodsky. Quick shot right on, and there was Draper to glove it and hold on with 11.05 to play in the second. 3 0 moves, a minute 28 left to Larson. They had the screen in front of him, but he saw it all the way. There just wasn't much on that little uh, wrist shot of uh, Shagorodsky. When you get a screen like that, it's best to keep it a little lower. He just kind of flipped that about belt high, and Draper was able to catch it easily. See it all the way and catch it. And a lot of times, what they want you to do is keep that thing maybe an inch or two off the ice, and right. the goalies just have a tough, tough time picking those up. Plus, it can hit a lot of people on the way in and deflect into the goal. This one here, which is an easy uh, catch by Draper. Off the faceoff now, the Moose have got it. And Hackstall got it to the line, but not out. Held in by Tippett. Roll it down. Here's Clayton Young trying to center one, but it hit a leg. It's picked up by the Moose and shoveled to center ice. Tippett back. His pass comes to the right side for Oleg Shargorodsky. He'll send it back for Tippett up the left side. Arrows trail 3-0, but a power play opportunity and a chance maybe to get on the board here and get back into this hockey game. Now the puck for Arneal. Base of the right circle. Arneal rolls it for Freer. His pass blocked. Still in behind the net, though. Freer cuts it out. Arneal had that roll off his skate. Great play by Freer, and it just went off the skate of Arneal. Now Freer again. Base of the right circle. Centered it, but just ahead of Arneal. Now Tippett pinching left side. Trying to lob one down. It's blocked by Moran and shot down the ice. 44 seconds left. The Larson 10-19 in the second. 3-0 Moose, but the arrows came close, Russ. Near misses, but misses nonetheless. Back loose in the Moose zone, and now it is Chris Foy. Rolled it down. Here's a chance. It was centered, but tipped away by the Moose. And Foy did a fine job to bat the puck down and prevent him from going all the way down the ice. Now back at center, it's Chitteroni. Barreling down the left side, it's Mike Yo. Cuts in. Snapshot block. Draper rebound. Townsend lets one fly and that's deflected. Now Chitteroni trying to trickle one out in front, but it's picked away by Snuggerud and blasted out to center ice. Now it is Chris Foy for the arrows. Give it to Chitteroni. Power play down to five seconds. Townsend dropped it back. Foy wide. Shoots right on Draper. Save rebound. And Miller was there for the moose. And he got it out of there. Penalty over his Foy shot. Ricochet wide by Townsend. A centering pass in front. Snuggerud's got it. And he will drop the puck and shoot it down the ice. This will be an icing call as the arrows are back to touch it. Foy's got it and we take a timeout. 922 to go in the second. 3-0 Moose and we're right back. Today's Houston Arrows broadcast is being brought to you in part by Coors Life. Reach for Coors Life, the silver bullet, and keep on moving. 
Houston heats up again. The excitement of the 94 NBA season is about to blast off. And the world champion Rockets are smoking with preseason action. Monday night on HSE. You're watching HSE, the best team on TV. 3-0 Minnesota moves over the Houston Arrows with Adam Gordon. I'm Russ Small. The difference really here is the Arrows got something going to the power play was the way the Moose cleared the puck away from Draper after he'd make the initial save. Arrows got some good chances at him, but not the second or third quick pepper shot. Now they're back in their own zone. But at least they're showing some signs of life here in the second period, starting to get a couple of shots on goal and see if they can build on it as Murray Eves now rumps through the neutral zone. He'll cross the blue line. He's got Maurice cutting. Instead, he'll drop it for St. Cyr, trying to cut it. St. Cyr right in. Can't get the shot away, and the puck goes down the ice. Hunt on his horse as he is pursued by Blair Atchenham. 8.48 left in the second period, and a 3-0 hockey game. Moose lead it. Murray Eves, a bad pass that goes behind St. Cyr. That'll trickle back into the Moose zone, and now it's at center. Here is Jakes. He'll chip it into Minnesota territory. Out of the net, Draper. Cleared to center, and now Shagorodsky will go back into his own zone with 8.27 to play in the second. 3-0. Moose lead it. Mike Maurice can't handle the pass. This will go back into the Minnesota zone. Draper comes out of the net. Axtall on the right side. Checked by Dave Tippett of the Arrows. And now Arneal picks up a loose puck, but was just barely offside. 3-0 Minnesota with 8.14 to play in period two. Scott Arneal was the most surprised guy in the building to see that puck just kind of sitting there in the blue line. He couldn't quite catch up to it. Keep it on. For a chance. All of a sudden, he looked down and said, hey, isn't that puck? Why is it there with nobody on it? So he went and grabbed it and brought it in, but it was an offside to play. 8.14 to play in the second period. Arrows get work to do. They've fallen behind the Minnesota Moose. Three to nothing. Minnesota Moose coming in with just one win in the season. One, five, and one. But they're about halfway towards their second, unless the Arrows can get something going. Yeah, they haven't won at home. Their win came on the road, and right now, if they can hold on, they'll have themselves their second as a shot from the Arrows go wide. Now it is Robinson. Checked along the boards. Tippett trying to muscle it. He'll cut out in front. Tippett center. And oh, Arneal couldn't get the shot away. Tippett may have had an angle on the shot but he thought Arneal could get a stick on that puck. A good play, though. Now along the boards as the arrow's starting to go to work a little bit here. Arneal trying to center one. Freer can't find the handle. It's picked up by Schenk and cleared to center ice. Christian had that roll away by Robinson. Back is Tippett at center ice, and he'll head up ice. Tippett hooked on the play, trying to draw the penalty. Won't get it. And now the loose back in their own end. A little Robert De Niro there. <laughs> Much as Schenk had done earlier as the two-line pass is called. Uh, Let's take a timeout. 3 0, the Moose lead it. We're back after this. Oh, uh, hi. Elvira here, finding great horror movies for the Coors Life Flick or Treat giveaway. Coors! Huh? We're giving away 50,000 videos like The Giant Evil Monster, The Wasp Woman, or The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Don't just stand there. Look for me this Halloween in a shocking display of specially marked Coors packages with film clips inside that tell you if you won. The Coors Light Flicker Treat Giveaway. It'll be a scream. <laughs> Off just inside the Moose zone. Adam Gordon along with Russ Small from the Summit in Houston. The Moose on top, three to nothing. Here comes Ivan Corvo. He'll roll the puck into the arrow zone. Out of the net, Troy Gamble leaves it for Chris Foy. It is Foy watched along by Moran, but he gave the puck away to Sean Williams. Now puck in behind Stefan Moran. Trying to move it out in front. Popped away by Foy. Now again, Williams trying to center it. A block by Clayton Young. And he'll jump to the neutral zone and a lead pass just missing Townsend. Here is Ivan Corvo, rolled it back into the arrow zone. Valamont gave it away, couldn't clear it. Here's a chance, Williams, center shot, score! Stefan Moran! Wow, what a play there, and it's now a 4 nothing Moose lead. But the key word in that opportunity there, and you said it, was Valamont. Carl Valamont gave it away, didn't have to. It was along the near boards as we look at it, and just kind of flipped a backhander off the near boards, thinking for some reason that he was going to get out of the uh, zone and alleviate any of the pressure, and it did not get out of the zone, and it was sent right back into the circle and back out in front, deflected home out in front by Stefan Moran, and it is four to nothing, and uh, this uphill climb is now an up mountain climb for the Arrows. Chitteroni and Maurice 
Jakes with Jakes and Hunt. Well, this is one uh, that I know that the uh, Arrows will likely want to forget. You know, you don't see the Arrows play like this in, in the seven games that they have played. They have been in all of them. They have all been one goal games except the 6-3 win against Las Vegas. And uh, this is just one, I guess you have these every once in a while. And like you said, hey, they had 10 days off. They had 10 days off and then they got to go right back at three games and three nights. Normally, you don't see this kind of game at home. You know, the, the odd part of this weekend is their best game of the weekend came on the road in a place where it's hard to keep your mind on the game, Las Vegas, and they come home for two that they're less than thrilled about. Now the puck back into the loose zone and up and out of play, and play whistled down with seven minutes to play in the second period. 4 nothing Minnesota. The fifth goal of the year for Stefan Moran. The Moose score at 12.57 of this period. Carbo and Williams get the assist making it four to nothing and uh, those guys have been together in the last three minnesota goals Puck shot into the move zone draper comes out of the net and it's patched all roll it up the far side action him checked on the play by eaves as they go skate the skate now maurice trying to work it free back along the wall it's larry olam drifting in behind his own twine and he'll flip it to the line and out to todd archie Archie's pass comes to Atchinum, return it to Archie along the near side, cross the line, drilled by Chitteroni, and the puck comes to center. Here's Mike Maurice, crosses the line with Eve, trying to find Chitteroni now down the right side as he pulls up along the half boards, cuts it back to the line. Jakes couldn't find the handle, and it's back out to center. Here is Curtis Hunt for Houston, drills it into Minnesota territory, and we get a whistle, and we'll take a timeout. 4-0 the Moose, and we're back after this. People stopping by. With a new Exxon MasterCard, you can earn unlimited rebates for free gasoline. And the more you use it at Exxon, or for other purchases like meals, travel, shopping, the more free gasoline you'll earn. People stopping by. There's no annual fee either, so apply at Exxon now. And the first thing you'll earn is a free six-pack of Coca-Cola. People stopping by Small and Adam Gordon in a 4 0 Moose Lee. Here's the puck back in Arrow territory. It comes to center for Mark Freer. He'll roll the puck ahead into the Moose zone. Now Arneal's got it, but that is offsides in play. He's whistled down. Moran tonight with one goal and a couple of assists. I mentioned that uh, he and Williams and Corb have been together for a few here. It was. Uh, Williams, late in the first, midway through the first period, who scored from Moran and Corvo. And it was Shank from Moran. And then it was Moran from Williams and Corvo. So those guys have uh, started piling up some points here. All I can tell you here, Adam, is tomorrow night I'm going to be in Philadelphia to broadcast the Oilers at the Eagles on KTRH and the Oilers Radio Network. And I hope this game here tonight so far is not a sign of what my weekend and Monday night is going to be like. Puck at center eyes here is Daniel Schenk. He's watched by Tippett, gave the puck away to Freer, cuts in and shoots. Mark Freer, wow, what a goal. Top shelf over the shoulder of Tom Draper. Arrows on the board. It's 4-1 Moose. Well, you can only score them one at a time. And so you take the first one, a giveaway right out near the blue line. And Freer takes it, drops it, moves in, and then fires it to the top corner. We talked about Freer earlier on. He makes two great plays. One is to keep it in the zone, and of course, the shot, terrific. He's the Arrows leader with 10 points, six assists, four goals. His point scoring streak now rides on to six games. Three goals, six assists, and nine points in that stretch. Should be an unassisted goal by Freer. His second unassisted goal of the year. Here is a pass. It comes to center ice. It's going to go over two lines. It's going to go down into the move zone, and it's going to be an icing call as play halted with 5.33 left in a 4-1 hockey game. And, Russ, I don't know of anything better to bring a team back into a hockey game but a good goal like that. Well, again, you can only score one at a time. There's no two-goal play in hockey. 
one at a time. And I'm sure Terry Ruskowski is happy to have gotten the first one. He looks up on the board, sees 5.33 to play, and he's telling his guys now, guys, that's one. That's one down. We don't have to get that first one anymore. We already got it. Let's see if we can get another one here in the last five and a half minutes of this period. And we'll actually be down two goals and have them on the ropes when we start the third period. Let's put some pressure on them, see how they play, thinking we're coming back. Boy, a goal in the next 5.33 by the Arrows would be huge because, like you say, you get it late. That's going to be sitting in the minds of the Moose, and the Arrows all of a sudden maybe gives them the energy to come back. And it, it kind of goes back to one of the keys, Russ, we talked about not letting them off the hook. And right. the same thing goes when you're down. Did you ever see a team ahead by two goals playing like it's behind by two? You know, it's you get a little pressure. You say, uh-oh, we're going to blow a four-goal lead? Saw last night. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Here's a puck loose in the arrow zone, and it's Mike Yo who jumps on it, but it's a two-on-three rush. Arrow's trying to catch up to make it interesting, but it's turned around by the Moose and shot to center. Now, here is Chris oh, Boyd. He got, yeah, he got the stick high on Moore and gave him a pretty good shot, and he's going to get nailed maybe for a spear or a hook, but I think Corvo may get nailed as well, well here, retaliating. And I'll tell you, Corville may have cost his team a power play. Now, I, I think he did. I think he may get a, a high stick or maybe a slash coming to start it with. I'm not sure exactly what the call is going to be. But it was not a good penalty by Foy at all, especially at this moment of the game. And out there at center ice with nothing much going on. Corville may go as well, and that would cost the power play here. He's definitely going for a little retaliation. That was a dumb penalty on his part. So a slash and a high stick for both Corvo and Foy respectively. That will open things up now as we go four on four. The arrows dodge a bullet there because the Moose tonight have had a pretty good power play going. They've got two of their four goals on the power play. The arrows were about to give up a power play opportunity here, but Corvo with the retaliating high stick to the uh, four. Slash, and so they both go for two. And we've got 513 to play in the second, and we play four against four. Face off will be inside the arrow zone. Warren uh, against Clayton Young. Sticks will be down as they jump for the face off. One by the Moose, Hackstall left side, whacked by Young. It's centered out in front, broken up by Maurice, and here come the arrows, three on two, lead pass, left side, picked up by Hunt, but he lost the handle on it, and Williams turns it around. Now Valamont back to his own blue line, finds Curtis Hunt right side, he gave the puck up though, and now Maurice tossed it back into his own end, and arrows kind of scrambling right now, trying to find the puck. Well, it's tough when you're four against four, and the guy leading your rush is a defenseman. He's not going to handle it as well as the forwards will, and it's been Hunt the last two rushes. Here's Mike. Mike Maurice now as he crosses the blue line, trying to lead Clayton Young, but he can't catch up to the puck, and here is Dave Snuggerud. He'll move it out to center ice, but it's turned around by Maurice, but heads up, fired it into the Arrows bench, and play is whistled down. 4 4.28 left in the second period, and a 4-1 hockey game in favor of the Moose, but Arrows getting the last goal, and see if they can start something here. There was even some uh, question earlier today if Curtis Hunt was going to be able to play tonight. Got a muscle pull, and uh, we suspected he would, and indeed he is. But uh, he's not at 100% full strength. 4.28 to play in the second period. Speaking of full strength, neither of these teams is right now. They're both playing four on four for another minute and 15. Eves and Chitteroni with Jakes and Robinson. Christian comes out with Snuggerud for the Moose. Kolstad defensively with Chris Hines. Here's Robinson now, drifting back to his own zone. He'll flip it up for Mario Chitteroni. His pass goes to Jakes, and the arrow's trying to bust it out. Here is Steve Jakes now, works it through Snuggerud, brings it over the blue line. Jakes drifting down the right side, center the pass, just behind Chitteroni, puck behind. Arrows can't move it. Eves had a chance, but couldn't get it out in front. Now Chitteroni blasts it back in behind for Eves. He's wrapped up by Kolstad. Oh, the Arrows had a chance there. Now the puck dug out by Dave Snuggerud. He's wrapped up Chitteroni, and they both go after it. And the Moose have got it out the center. Jakes, right to left, give Chitteroni. Shoots right on deep for the save, and he'll hold on. 3.47 left in the second, and a 4-1 hockey game. Moose leading. 
finally getting some uh, chances on Draper. Good shot by Mario Cittaroni, but nobody in front of the net. It's only four on four at the moment anyway, so you're not going to get a lot of people available to screen in front. Draper sees it all the way, gets over to the uh, left side of the goal and makes the stop. Mario Cittaroni had a good opportunity there, but uh, not really a great scoring chance. Good shooting chance. It would have had to have been a perfect shot to beat the goaltender who saw it all the way. They'll stand by at the end of the period with Russ. We'll be in the second period intermission interview. Be sure to stay tuned with that. 4-1 moves. Puck out the center ice. The Arrows have got it, and here is Mark Freer now with the blue line with Arneal. Freer down the right side. Watched by Larson. Freer still the puck. He's got the only arrow goal and unassisted tally. Puck along the boards. Picked up by Young. And Johnny Young trying to work it through Arneal. Get it to the line. And not out. Held in by Robinson. Nice play there. And finally, the Moose get it down the ice. With 3.15 left in the second period and a 4-1 hockey game. Here is Steve Jakes. Is now the penalties over to Corvo and to Foy. And teams are at five aside. Here's Freer having a little trouble. The puck had to go back. And now he'll turn it up ice. Freer gave the puck away. Those he shot it right to Corvo. Crosses the line. Corvo trying to move in. But the Moose offside, are offside. offside. Let's take a timeout. Under three to play in the second. 4-1 Moose. And we'll be right back. Longhorn fans capture the excitement and tradition of Texas football in the pages of Horns Illustrated magazine. Horns Illustrated is rushed to you weekly during football season and monthly thereafter. Each issue is filled with colorful game reviews, predictions, insider recruiting news, complete scouting reports, and much, much more, all from a Texas perspective. Call to get Horn Sports News direct from Austin. Call now. Off center ice, and the Moose have it and shoot it into the arrow zone. They lead it by three at four to one. Here is Oleg Shagorodsky for Houston. Get it out to center for Young. Tipped it ahead for Townsend. Broken up Corvo, and he'll fire it back into the arrow zone. This will be icing as Shagorodsky goes back in play. Is whistled down. Russ, we got a score in the IHL. Detroit is leading Cleveland by the score of two to nothing. They're in the first period. Now let's see. This note says 30 seconds. Into the first period, that must be an old, uh, old score. The second goal scored by Detroit's uh, Sandy Smith, so they lead Cleveland two nothing. They can't lead two nothing. You think uh, 30 seconds into the first period? I think it's the other way around. 30 seconds remaining. Maybe. Ah, <laughs> that makes better sense. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, here's a puck down right side. Mike Yo tumbled down to the surface. Puck takes a weird hop out in front of backhander. Oh, and that hit the side of the net. Now the Moose get it to the line and not out. Here's a giveaway. Yo shoots, blasted a bullet wide of the net. Now it's picked up and shot to center by Williams and into the arrow zone it goes for Carl Balamon. 2.20 left. Arrows would love a tally here late in the second period as Valamont leads the rush, dumps it into the Moose zone. Back goes Larry Olam in behind his neck and toss the puck along the wall to come to the line, not out. Shagorovsky shot deflected, Draper save, rebound in front, but the Arrows can't come up with it. And here come the Minnesota Moose, Carlo crosses the line, drops Williams, shoots, give him the stick save, and the puck deflected up and out of play. So a little end-to-end -end action, and both teams having some quality chances. Clayton Young with a uh, good chance a moment ago. That shot on goal, it's a 4 2 hockey game. If he can slide that in where he was aiming, there's no way Draper, a Draper would have stopped it. But he misses the net. So important to get those shots on goal. Because if it's not on goal, it's not going in. But it's that it's that simple. In the shootout last night, after falling behind by one goal in the shootout, the last three shooters, one hit the post, but that's not a shot on goal. The next two missed it completely so you had three guys with a chance to tie it and nobody put a shot on goal you got to get him on goal here's a puck picked up Tippett couldn't get it out of the zone now the moose snug a to drive glove save gamble rebound in front Tippett trying to pop it free Christian's got it but he can't get the shot away now along the left side Christian sent it back to line close that misplayed it now St. Cyr trying to work it away from Hines but he got it out to center ice turned around by the moose Christian sweeping into the arrow zone right side tipped away by Dave Tippett coming up the right wing boards tip it chipped it into the moose zone and Hines goes back for it. drills it along the firewall to the line hunt held it in now 
foul on the far side that cycled down low for Kolstad. He's jammed along the boards by St. Cyr. Arrows hold it in, but only for a moment, and then it comes back out to center. Now it is Minnesota's Chris Hines. He'll fire it into Houston territory. No icing is Hunt back to play it. Curtis Hunt in his own zone missed Arneal with a pass, and that's been a lot of the problem here tonight. That was one of our keys. Yeah, the passing has not been great to get the flow going in the direction you want. Here's a quick drive by Williams, and I think Campbell got a blocker on it, and here is Chitteroni. His rink-wide pass is deflected away, and it's shot back to the arrow blue line. Foy trying to sweep it out of there, and here is Mike Maurice. cross ice pass for Curtis Hunt with 39 seconds to play in the second period. 4-1, the Moose lead it. Hackstall trying to get it out of the zone. He couldn't, but Williams will. It goes down the ice, and this will be an icing call for Steve Jakes to touch. And he'll bring it back into the Moose zone with 28 seconds remaining. Second period, by three, 4-1. Get your best offensive team on the ice right now. Regroup. You got 28.2 seconds left in this period. Know what you're going to do. You got the face off in the circle to the right of Draper. Know what you want your center iceman to do, where you want him to draw the puck. Gary Ruskowski is indeed, even as we speak, talking to his team, making sure everybody's on the same page. They got a good situation here with the face off the zone to the right of Draper to win a draw cleanly and get something going here in the final half minute of the second period. Keep it in the zone, maybe get a scoring opportunity. Derry stands up on the bench and makes sure that his five skaters on the ice know exactly what he wants them to do. Periskowski right now screaming at somebody out there and now he's trying to bark instructions to his team as he tells Freer the way he wants this lined up. Yeah, he's making sure they're in the right place and what he wants them to do. Freer will take the draw. Face off to the right of Draper. Freer against Stefan Moran. Drop of the puck, and it's controlled by the arrows. Here is Arneal. He's knocked off the puck, and it's picked up by Christian and shot to center ice. In fact, it'll go all the way down the ice with 16 seconds to play here in this second period, and the Moose lead it by a score of 4-1. to one. Here is Robinson up the left side. He'll toss it back into Minnesota territory. Hextall now working back in his own zone. Watched by Arneal, and whoa, that one almost clanged off the head of the linesman. Uh, Frank Presti Giovanni as the puck goes down on the ice, and the buzzer sound ending this second period. The Arrows got out to another dismal start of this period, but boy, they started to pick it up. They got some shots on goal, and finally they got on board on a Mark Freer goal, but they also gave up a pair themselves to the Minnesota Moose, and they trail in this hockey game by a score of 4-1. to one. And when we return, we'll have more to the summit, including an interview with Mario Cittaroni. 4-1 Moose, we're right back. Tour 18 was sad to announce the loss of several of our greens this summer. They looked pretty bad. And I felt safe betting our superintendent they wouldn't be back before September. Well, a bet's a bet. Tour 18, the greens are back. Get into Luxor Las Vegas by entering under the Sphinx's belly and through a boat which is really the lobby and then past the talking camels by the Nile River boat ride and up this elevator which moves at a 39 degree angle and drop your stuff off in your room and go to the secrets of the pyramid which takes you to the past, present and future and then jump into the pool for a brisk swim because it's only a gazillion degrees outside and head to the spa for a massage only to wind up inside a flight simulator and if you're not getting into it by now, do yourself a favor buddy and check your pulse. great moment in HSE history is being brought to you by Exxon. For a cleaner engine, cleaner air, and improved performance, rely on Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. People stopping by with a new Exxon MasterCard, you can earn unlimited rebates for free gasoline. And the more you use it at Exxon, or for other purchases like meals, travel, shopping, the more free gasoline you'll earn. There's no annual fee either, so apply at Exxon now. And the first thing you'll earn is a free six-pack of Coca-Cola.
action. The arrows trying to find some work ethic to get it going. And when you speak of work ethic, you talk about one guy, Mario Cittaroni, and he's standing by with Russ Small. Adam, thank you very much. The arrows have some work to do here in the third period as they trail 4-1 at the end of a couple. It's been work out there tonight. I think uh, Mario guys working real hard, just not a lot going your way so far. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we've had our chances and we just haven't been able to put them in the net, but uh, we've been doing a lot of things that uh, we'd really like to crack for the third period. Like we're putting the puck in the corner, but we don't have anybody going after it. We're giving the D a lot of opportunities to easily clear it out of uh, their zone. So, you know, we got to bear down and do the things that we, we have to do right to get back on track here. It's tough to dump and chase like that when maybe you don't have the legs to do it with here on Sunday after playing Friday and Saturday. Well, that's true, but uh, I think when we're making the dumps, what we have is uh, as the problem is that we're making the dump right at the blue line where our forwards already stopped still, so we can't get any momentum uh, to get on the puck before the defenseman. Uh, yeah, I think we're a little bit tired, but uh, I don't think that's a legit excuse for this uh, type of game that we're playing tonight. All right, so if we continue that, the thing for us to look for then is for the puck to be dumped shortly across the red line so the forward skate through center ice can without breaking stride go in and get it and get something set up yeah that decision has to be made when we cross the red line not uh, not when we get to the blue line where we're stopped uh, we got to make that decision a lot earlier it's causing a lot of problems for us their D are standing up and they're not giving us an opportunity to get in their zone at all you know we've got some good players that can handle the puck but uh, it doesn't matter what you do sooner or later that if they've got two guys standing up on the one forward he's gonna force you to move the puck and if we don't have anybody skating with a little momentum we're not gonna get the puck still uh, new to uh, Houston, the young season, uh, the team playing so very well generally and the fans enjoying it. How have you enjoyed Houston? Well, it's uh, so far so good. Um, we haven't had a big opportunity to see most of the city since we've been gone quite a bit and uh, you know we're practicing every day that we have so uh, there hasn't been an opportunity to see a lot of the town. We've seen a few places but uh, so far the city's treated us tremendously. Uh, all I can say is that uh, aside from uh, all the rain we've had in the last couple week, uh, weeks it's a terrific city to be in and uh, you know, hope to make it a good season and uh, hopefully I'll be around to see the whole season. Well, someday, 50 years from now, you'll be sitting there bouncing grandchildren off your, off your leg and you'll be saying, uh, hey, you guess who scored the first goal in Arrows history? And they'll say, it must have been you, Grandpa. Well, uh, <laughs> hopefully I do get that opportunity to say that and uh, I'm proud to be the, the person who scored the first goal on uh, the history of the Houston Arrows and, you know, it's something that I'll keep in uh, as, a, as a tremendous, uh, a big memory that, uh, you know, I'm proud to have. Good luck out here uh, the rest of the way here. you got three goals to make up. I know you can do it, and good luck the rest of the season. Yeah, we, you know, our third period seems uh, to be one of our strongest points, so hopefully we can come out this third period and get a, a few bounces our way for a change, and hopefully uh, things will turn around for us. That's Mario Cittaroni. I'm Russ Small. We're at the summit where the Arrows are trailing the Minnesota Moose 4-1 at the end of a couple of periods. We've got third period action coming your way pretty soon. Stay with us on HSC. There's no doubt that the sun influences our weather, and the Weather Channel would like to show you how the sun also influences your cable TV viewing. Your local cable system receives television signals from a satellite. Occasionally, the satellite will get right between the Earth and sun. When that happens, there'll be a couple of minutes when the sun's more powerful waves will affect the clear picture you're used to. This will happen mostly in the afternoons and only for a few days during the year. When you say it, stay tuned because your clear cable picture will be right back. A message on behalf of your cable system brought to you by the Weather Channel. Steelers and the Cardinals come to play on TNT, the funny system, where the two-minute warning means pick up your body parts and attend to the wounded. And that's why on Sunday night, we come to play TNT, the Steelers and the Cardinals. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Sunday night NFL on TNT. Listen to Mark Kessler mornings on Z107.5 to win NFL on TNT prizes. Speed, flying on steel blades across an arena of ice, stopping on a dime. Houston has a new way of flying. They're called the Arrows, and they're Houston's newest pro team. They'll be earning their wings every day. Bringing you thrills and chills will be their goal. Phoenix battles Houston, Friday night at 7, live on HSE. You want the NBA? We got it! Give me another line, action! The Dallas Mavericks are back, playing against the Jaws, the key.
team in the shack. But guys like Jamal, Jason, Kidd, and Jimmy Jackson come to reunion and see nothing but action. Dick Mata, we got him. Jamal Mashburn, yeah, we got him. Jason and Jimmy, yeah, we got him. With a 12-game nothing but action plan, call 214-988-0117. Welcome back to the Summit in Houston. Adam Gordon along with Russ Small. A 4-1 hockey game here in the second period intermission. And Russ, I know we kind of talked about the work ethic a little bit, but uh, actually the Arrows kind of got some things started there at the end of the period. They picked up a goal and created some more chances. Well, the goal was important to get that Mark Freer goal because uh, only a goal can give you the impetus you need to go ahead and get another goal. So the work ethic was there. They're working hard. Nobody ever accused them of not working hard out there tonight. So far, uh, it just hasn't happened a lot for them. The Minnesota Moose are playing better than the Houston Arrows to this moment, but there's 20 minutes to play and things can change. You know, we talked about the two-man advantage to start that second period for the Minnesota Moose, and that's how things started as we take a look at the highlights. Daniel Schenk. We talked about that in the first intermission, and what happens? They come out, and in the first minute of the second period, they get two, three chances on Troy Gamble, and they get the goal from Schenk. That came during a two-man advantage before the Minnesota Moose, and Schenk just puts it home. It was easy pickings for him by the time he got into the picture. Uh, it was bad enough. It was 3 nothing. A terrific deflection out in front by Stefan Moran makes it 4 nothing. And again, what are you going to do if you're the goaltender? You just got to uh, do the best you can. But Moran with a terrific deflection out in front. But then they get a break as Mark Freer knocks down a puck up near the blue line, gets it into the slot, and fires it hard into the top side on Draper, the goaltender. Freer making a great play here for the unassisted goal. And that gives him a little bit of a spark. They almost grab another one before the period is over. They do not, however, and they go into the third period now uh, trailing 4-1, but they got a little something going there towards the end. Taking a look at the second period stats, uh, the Moose out shooting the Houston Arrows 13-11 in that uh, second period. The saves 11-10 with Gamble making 11, Draper making 10, power plays, Minnesota 1 of 2, the Arrows 0 of 1 on the power play, and penalties, three, minute, three penalties for nine minutes for the Moose, while the Arrows had two penalties for seven minutes, Russ. But you look at the shots on goal, 13 to 11. I remember at one point we pointed out that Minnesota had the shots on goal advantage in that second period of nine to nothing. So that means in that those moments late in that period where we say that the arrows came alive, they outshot the Minnesota Moose 11 to 4 over the latter minutes of that period. So they did get something going and they started to take some of the play away. You know, we said that the first few minutes of the second period would be key for the Moose. I think the first three or four minutes for the arrows here, if they can get a goal, they're right back in this thing. The first three or four, the last three or four, and the middle 12 uh, are <laughs> going to be the key. When you're down three goals, you better not let down for any portion of the final 20 minutes. All right, our score is 4 1 in favor of the Minnesota Moose. We're in the second period intermission, and we'll have more from the summit right after this. Scratch man here to demonstrate the Texas Lottery's newest scratch game, Double Doubler. You'll scratch and match any three like amounts, and you could win. Then stretch the bonus box, and you could double the amount shown. Or double, double the amount shown. And now I will reconform into my former self. Uh-oh. Play Double Doubler from the Texas Lottery. Okay, guys. One more time. There's your champion for you. Raymond Floyd, winner of 31 PGA Tour events. Hi, I'm Raymond Floyd. I'm hitting the ball farther now than in any time in my career, and I'm convinced it's because of the flexibility and strength routine I started 10 years ago. I believe you too can benefit from a program specially designed to exercise the muscles important to the golf swing. Fit for Golf exercises will increase your flexibility and strength and improve your ability as a golfer to play longer and stronger each day. It's an easy workout program for all ages designed to increase both flexibility and strength. Fit for Golf is a great gift for a spouse, parent, or a professional associate, and it costs less than the price of a dozen good golf balls. To order your video, call 1-800-327-9994 or send $19.95 plus $4.95 for shipping and handling to the address on your screen. It was the most bizarre thing. All of a sudden, we plummeted 8,000 feet below the Earth's surface. And then there were these talking camels and kings and queens. The elevator didn't go up or down, but sideways like that. And then I said, Bill, look, 
Those people, they're floating. And then there was this, this light, you know? And you could see it all the way from outer space. It's different on the inside, too. Luxor, get into it. Welcome back to the summit. I'm Russ Small with Adam Gordon. The Arrows trailing the Minnesota Moose at the end of two periods of play. The score is four to one. It's time now for Time Out for Health, and we talk about aerobic conditioning tonight. Time Out for Good Health is presented by Columbia HCA Healthcare Corporation, a new commitment in healthcare together. Welcome to another session of Time Out for Good Health. All sporting activities require proper conditioning. Tonight we're going to talk about aerobic cardiovascular training. Let's go down to the conditioning laboratory. At a previous game, we talked very briefly about the various forms of conditioning. Tonight, we're going to go into that in a little more detail. We have with us Jerry Mines again. Jerry? Thank you again, Dr. Baker. Uh, hockey is a very high capacity aerobic activity. If you'll notice our skaters on the ice, they're only on the ice for about 30 to 45 seconds at any time, which is almost an anaerobic type activity, but requires a huge aerobic base to their condition. Here in our fitness lab, we have a variety of equipment that we use to establish that sort of aerobic base. We primarily use stationary bicycles. Stationary bicycling translates well to hockey athletes, but in order to avoid staying in one routine all the time, we do cross train some with our stair climbers, and then our treadmills, and then sometimes even jogging or walking outdoors, just so that there's a different activity involved in our cardiovascular fitness. Remember to always check with your physician before beginning a new exercise program. Please join us at the next game for another session of Time Out for Good Health, when we will discuss strength training. Time Out for Good Health was presented by Columbia HCA Healthcare Corporation a new commitment in healthcare together. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting videotape. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same revolutionary new training techniques that have produced Baseball World's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. The Defensive Drills video vastly improves players' arm strength, running speed, quickness, agility, and infield and outfield defensive skills. Even coaches practice organization. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a massive Masterpiece, the best defensive drill video ever produced. Many professional players are excited about this videotape. Just ask Atlanta Brave superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-423-2121. That's 1-800-423-2121. It really worked for me. Hungry for some sports this November? Well, gobble up some NBA action with the Dallas Mavericks and San Antonio Spurs as they fill up the nets. Then, feast your eyes on women's action as they dish it out with the women's preseason NIT. Need something cool for dessert? Well, spoon down some hockey action with the Arrows. Still hungry? He scores! We'll pile up a full plate of sports this November on HSE. the summit in Houston. Adam Gordon along with Russ Small in a 4-1 hockey game. The Moose leading the Houston Arrows. And let's take a look at the scoring summary brought to you by Columbia HCA Health Corporation. And uh, it was 2-0 at the start of the second period. And the Moose went to work on that two-man power play. And before that two-man advantage had expired, Daniel Schenk had promptly potted one behind Troy Gamble. The assist to Stefan Moran at 53 seconds of the second period. And it was 3-0 Moose. Were they done? No. How about Stefan Moran this time on the goal column? He notches the goal. Williams and Corvo getting the assist at 12.57. And it was 4-0. And the Arrows were down. And were they out? Well, no, they come back. Another turnover this time. Mark Freer grabs the puck at his own blue line. Pots a big drive above the left shoulder of Tom Draper. He's got the goal. It's an unassisted goal for Mark Freer. The Arrows on the board. And it's a 4-1 hockey game. Once again, the shot's on goal now through two periods of play. The Moose 27, the Arrows 19. Power 
plays through two periods. The Arrows 0 of 2 on the man advantage, while the Moose have two power play goals out of three opportunities. And that's actually kind of a surprise, two reasons. One, the Moose come into this hockey game, a struggling team on the power play, something like 0 for their last 25. Number two, the Arrows have a great penalty killing unit. But we've talked about the fact that the uh, Arrows have been a step slower than the Moose tonight. When you put one team a step ahead of the other and then give that first team one or two, men on the ice, they're going to get good opportunities. And again, they weren't always the first shot. In some of those, it was just a matter of being quicker to jump on the loose puck, quicker to jump into the hole, quicker to get the second or third shot to beat Troy Gamble. Where conversely at the other end, with some of the shots that they've had on the Draper, it, it, the situation wasn't such a bad one, but it was cleared so quickly by the Minnesota Moose because again, they've been clicker to pounce, quicker to pounce on the loose puck. Let's take a look at the Arrows' upcoming schedule. It's brought to you by Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. And the other game of this home-and-home -home series will resume Wednesday night in Minneapolis as it's the Arrows and the Moose. That's a 7 o'clock start. That'll be on KNUZ Radio only. We're on the air at 7, face-off at 7.08. Then Friday and Saturday, Phoenix Roadrunners in for a pair. Friday's game uh, will be on KNUZ and on Home Sports Entertainment. Be sure to join Russ Small and myself. Game time at 7. And then Saturday, yes, I know, I'm I'm really excited about this, Russ. Hockey, Halloween, the Village People, the Phoenix Roadrunners, and yes, Russ, you're going to dress and get... No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what, now, what is exactly the promotion going to be? You, you dress up like a Village person? Well, no, the Village People are going to be here for a post-game concert. Okay. And because it's Halloween, they want you to dress up, and they think I would look like the Indian on there. I, I but uh, do you have to dress up like a Village People? No, person? you don't have to, but we want you to. Um, I can't dress as something different. What do you want to dress as? I don't know. I'll think about it. <laughs> well, I just want to know what the requirements are. Well, I don't know. I, as long as my shirt's tucked in, my mother will be happy, and I can go with anything I want to be. But uh, well, we'll take we'll take calls this week uh, to HSC, <laughs> and uh, whatever you want us to dress as, uh, that's what we'll do. Well, that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I think our producer director Mike and SDC is going. Uh, <laughs> On the moose. Operators are standing by. <laughs> All right, so are the arrows of the moose for period number three. Here we go. Arrows down by three, but good chance to maybe try and claw their way back into this one with an early goal. Drop of the puck, we're underway. Puck at center, the moose have got it. Turn around, Reed Larson up the left side. It's batted down. Christian slides it into the arrow zone, but it's picked up by Shargarotsky left side. Rolled it into the moose zone, but quickly rejected by the moose defense. Now into the arrow zone. It goes for Oleg Shagorodsky. Here is Oleg. Stops on a dime. Works it back to the near side for Carl Valamont. Valamont. Left wing boards for the arrows. Rumbling down the left side. He'll shoot it into Minnesota territory. Draper out of the cage. He'll throw it along the fire boards for Stuggeru. Get it out the center ice. Picked up Shagorodsky. Looped it into Minnesota territory. Now it is Daniel Shank. Lost it at center. Back in the moose zone. Larson to Williams. Out to center. Picked up by Young. Backhanded into the moose zone once again. So we're played uh, 50 seconds here in this third period. 4 1, Minnesota. Here's a puck now. Rolled along the boards for Chris Foy. He will jump on it and get it out to Clayton Young, rumbling down the right wing. Young in over the blue line. Had it poked away nicely. Tell you what, give the moose defense credit. They've done a fine job of standing up the arrows at the blue line tonight. Here's a pass at center ice. Chris Foy for the arrow. Blast one into the air. Uh, loose zone. Back goes Kolstad. Stops and goes up the other way. And he misses everybody. This uh, will not be icing because Gamble forced to play it as Corvo got in ahead of everybody. So now Gamble throws it to Robinson. His pass misses everybody again. And again, some errant passing here. And the arrow's back at their own end. Errant passing, but they've been headmanning the pass and coming very close to getting somebody to break in. The arrows have got to score at this end, but they've got to be very careful at the other to not be so concerned about scoring up here that they let a break go against them the other end. Puck back in the Minnesota zone. Here is Kolstad. Back in his own end, he'll fire it off the boards. It'll go through center and into the arrow zone. This will be an icing call as Curtis Hunt is back. That will take a timeout. Two minutes have been played in the third. 4-1 moose, and so we'll be right back. Southwest Airlines will not lose a fair one. We have low operating costs, so we can offer you low fares on a regular basis. It's not a gimmick. It's not a promotion with us. It's something that we believe in with all of our fiber. It's every seat, every flight, everywhere we fly. Other airlines try to copy Southwest, but they're just facsimiles of the real thing. Southwest is the low fare airline. If there's a fare war, they're going to get nuked. Adam Gordon, Russ Small, the Summit, 4-1 minutes. 
Minnesota. And a face off to the left of Tom Draper. Top of the puck. Arrows win the draw. Right point. Jakes lets the shot go. That deflected into the corner. Draper comes out. He'll roam the pass to the line. It got by Jakes and into the arrow zone. It will go. Here is Mike Maurice now. He'll turn up the right wing. Pulls up. And he missed Eves with the pass. This will sail into the Minnesota zone. Foot race for the loose puck. Back stop. Back down is icing. Nice face off goes back into the arrow zone. You know, just before this icing, we saw a couple of icing opportunities go the other way, and, and uh, Troy Gamble had to play them both, and it waved off the icing. But that's not a bad idea for the Minnesota Moose. They know that the arrows are tired. They know if they keep trying to send somebody breaking through center ice, breaking down ice, the worst thing that happens is that it's an icing call or maybe a two-line pass somewhere, but it means the arrows have to go skate all the way back down and play it. And the more you can make them skate, the more tired they're going to be. Puck now in the arrow zone. Here is Curtis Hunt. He'll get it out to center for Murray Eves. His pass missed Maurice, but now it is Chitter, or St. Cyr, rather. It's that little trouble, and then he was pounded after the whistle by Hackstall. And for those of you still new to the game and still learning it, you can put yourself offside. You know that a player can't be in the forward zone across the blue line before the puck. That includes you. So in this case, the St. Cyr got the puck caught up in his skates and then kind of got turned around and dragged it into the zone behind him. He himself, even though he was the guy with the puck, was offside. Face off, controlled by the Moose. Larson trying to get it out of the zone. There was Christian that did it, and he feathered it all the way down into the arrow zone. Gamble out of the net, and here's Carl Valamon now. He's running two by Daniel Shank. Puck squirts free. Now along the boards, it's pried away by Scott Arneal. Trying to drift back in his own zone. He'll shoot it along the fireboards for a waiting Oleg Shagorodsky. Let's it fly to the near side, Arneal. Can he clear it? No, couldn't do it. And Christian held it in. Now behind the net, Shank centered it. That hit a leg, and now the arrow's trying to come away with it. Arneal through center ice, shoots it into Minnesota territory. It scoops the Draper, and he will hold on to that and play halted with 16.55 to play in the third. We'll take a break. 4-1 Moose, and we're back after this. Doing repairs on your car shouldn't make you feel like this. Haynes Auto Repair Manuals. See Haynes, see how. It's time to jam. Can you dig the it? The passion, the power, the pack tag. It's a love affair like no other. Who's going to play on New Year's Day? It's more Pack 10 action Saturday at 5 30 Central, live on HSE. You're watching HSE, the best team on TV. Face off in the circle to the left side of Tom Draper. I've heard a lot of great go get him, get the crowd into its songs, played in a lot of arenas. This is the first time I've heard the beer barrel polka. <laughs> they brought it out last night, and uh, uh, Joe Pogge, the director of marketing, thought it would get the crowd going. Last night it did. <laughs> Today, only a real <laughs> beer barrel will get this crowd into it. For <laughs> <back>. several. <laughs> this puck back in the arrow zone. 4 1 Minnesota. Here is Robbie Robinson now in behind his net, and he'll start the rush from right to left. I heard one guy say, <laughs> Kill the song, give me the beer. <laughs> Here's Minnesota. Center ice. Williams. At his own blue line, sends it back to the Hines. He's watched by Yo. It's dug out by Yo. Left wing boards. Trying to start something. He lets a shot go. It drizzles wide of the net. Now Chitteroni trying to center one. Puck rolls in behind the net. Now to Corvo left side. Watched by Foy. It comes to the line. Yo holds it in. Mike Yo down the right wing for Young. Lost the puck. Polstad's got it for Minnesota. On the boards. Robinson held it in left point. Chitteroni a drive. Whizzles wide of the net. Now it's picked up by Hines. Couldn't clear the zone. Now the puck given away. Clayton Young, sharp angle shot block. Again, Young stuffs one out in front. Chitteroni can't get the shot away. Mario Chitteroni. He'll drop it for Clayton Young. Base of the right circle. Bumped by Hines along the wall. Here's a chance. Yo the drive. Stick save Draper. Rebound. Chitteroni trying to find the handle. He's in a battle with Stefan Moran. Puck given away. Yo, another shot. Stick save Draper. Now Young centered it, but Yo couldn't get the shot away. Robinson waits left side. He'll sweep it down low. Clayton Young for Mario Chitteroni. Right wing boards. Chitteroni chops it down low, but nobody there for Houston. And Dean Polstad is there, and he says, I have had enough of this, and I'm going to shoot it down the ice and draw the pretty obvious icing call here. As Robinson goes back to touch. Let's take a timeout. 4-1 Minnesota. We're back after this. People stopping by. 
With a new Exxon MasterCard, you can earn unlimited rebates for free gasoline. And the more you use it at Exxon, or for other purchases like meals, travel, shopping, the more free gasoline you'll earn. There's no annual fee either, so apply at Exxon now. And the first thing you'll earn is a free six-pack of Coca-Cola. Shot out to center ice, action him in a foot race with Curtis Hunt. Curtis run off the puck there now, and here is a chance down the left side is it's Harchi for the Moose. He's in a battle with Jakes. Well, back to the line, Eves, and he'll move it out to center ice. His pass comes to Maurice. Mike Maurice over the blue line, looking for his first goal as an arrow. Now turned back to his point. Lobs a high puck to the far corner. There's Larry Olin trying to bat it out of there, but instead it rests down the corner for Young. John Young rolls it near side, pitching his punch, centered it, but nobody there to get it to, and it's cleared to the line. Still not out, though. Larry Olam will work it to center ice, and here come the Moose. Three on two. Young crosses the line. Moose make a partial line change, though, as it's dropped back. Olam the drive. Great glove save by Gamble, and he'll hold on. 14-23 left in the third period. 4-1 Moose. Now we've got a big gathering in the corner to the left side of Troy Gamble. You know, I got to say, Russ, here, we played, uh, well, what, five and a half minutes, and even though a good scoring opportunity by the Moose, this first five minutes looked good for the Arrows. It did. They did some great board checking. A little bit earlier, the uh, Young and Yo and Chitteroni line was was really stupendous in their board checking, working the corners, working the boards, keeping the puck in the zone, keeping the pressure on. However, none of that forward checking really resulted in a great shot. They had a couple of, they had one uh, tough angle shot from low on the circle. They had one uh, shot from up near the point. So they didn't get a great goal scoring chance out of it, despite of some terrific forward checking. Forward checking here a moment ago led to a three on two break at the other end, and the Moose got a good scoring chance that Gamble made the glove save. A uh, drop of the puck. Here is Oleg Shagorodsky now. Up the right side, couldn't clear it, gave it away to Shank, rolled it back down. Here's Shagorodsky again. He'll blow it along the wall, and it comes out to center ice for Larson. He'll shoot it right back into Houston Arrow territory. We've played six minutes here in the third, and a 4-1 hockey game, and time's starting to wind down on the Arrows. Valamont fired it to the Minnesota Blue Line, turned around by the Moose. Shank drops, Snuggerud wine, shoots, and a stick save made by Gamble. And now Carl Valamont skates to center ice. Good pass to Arneal as he hits the line. Arneal trying to find Tippett, can't do it. And the puck up and out of play. Heads up, that's a souvenir, and we'll take a break. 4-1 Moose, 13.45 to play in the third, and we will be right back. Hi, everybody. I'm Al LeGrand. And I'm Chris Katulak, Louisiana Downs track announcer. Join us every Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock on HSE for Inside Louisiana Downs. Feature races, national races of the week, outstanding stakes events, and we'll take you inside Louisiana Downs for a look at trainers and jocks and really what makes horse racing what it is. That's Inside Louisiana Downs every Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock on HSE. Don't miss it. We'll see you. You seem to be having some good fun here. I don't know. I can't coordinate. I got the Y or the M okay. I can't do the C or the A. I'm practicing for the village people. Well, that's coming up Saturday night against Phoenix. I, I really am excited to see if you're going to be wearing some polyester for us on that night. I always do. <laughs> but it's 100% polyester. Oh, okay. I've got some gold medallions I'm going to put with a button-down shirt. Perfect. All right. Here's Mario Cittaroni. Try and find things here in a 4-1 hockey game. And now Cittaroni found a loose puck. Let's the shot go. And Colts have the save. A rebound. Tossed wide by Cittaroni. Now another drive by Clayton Young. Whistles wide of the net. Now on the near side. Mario Cittaroni trying to work it in the corner for Mike Yo. They are in there. But Stefan Moran worked it along the boards. It came to the line. Not out. Here's a drive by Yo. Right on. Draper save. Rebound. Cittaroni with a great job. He just stayed on top of it as Draper made the initial save. We've been talking about that. It's the second and third chance that can lead to it. The shot comes from high above the circle. Draper makes the save, but Cittaroni refuses to give up and give in and slides it between his legs. 
just under the glove actually and puts it home and it's now a 4-2 hockey game. The four checking again leads to some opportunities. This time they got a good shot and they got a goal and they cut the deficit to 4-2. We've still got 13 minutes to play. Chitteroni from Yo, who took the shot and Robinson. Buck back in the arrow zone and new life once again. 4-2 moves. Here come the arrows and a pass just eluding Murray Eves. This will trickle down to Tom Draper. He'll stop and leave it for Hackstall. Now long. It's a given, given away almost, but it rolled through Harchi and back through the neutral zone and into arrow blue line territory. Young there to spank at it. Couldn't get it out of the zone. Yes, he did, though. Harchi thought maybe he held it in, but the uh, lines are the same. No, not quite. So 12 36 left in the third rush. 4 2 Moose, and all of a sudden, maybe a little interest peaked into this one. The official attendance figure, 7,431. And they are applauding now as the official word comes from Tom Franklin on the public address microphone. Chitteroni from Yo and Robinson. Chitteroni's third of the season comes at the seven-minute mark, and they want to get into it, and they're starting to here. If the Arrows can score the next goal, I think this play's going to erupt. Now the puck is back in the Arrow zone, and you are absolutely right, Russ. This place is, I think, waiting to explode. Let's see if the Arrows can give him a reason to do it. Now the puck along the wall. Maurice in the corner. Now into the corner for Townsend. He's knocked off the puck. Crowd wants a penalty. Watson says no. Now Valamon, whoop, had his stick lifted. Here come the Moose. Four on two, rumbling into the zone. Reed Larson drifts it. Atchinum shoots, and he cranked that wide. Now the puck picked up by Maurice, you know, I was in such a strange angle for me. I'm not so sure that may not have grazed the post. It seemed like it may have. Now Townsend left side. He'll cut in left side, center the pass. Draper stuck it aside. Valamont pinching. Now Freer, first with the puck, center Maurice. And I don't know if he expected that pass, and it just goes wide and down the ice. Got to get the stick on the ice, and he was not expecting it. That stick was up at knee level. Here is Oleg Shargarotsky for the arrows. Get it to the line on out, held in by Snuggerud. Here is a pass, Daniel. Daniel Shank centered it. It hit Shagorodsky. Christian now, he's drilled into the wall by Valamont. Now Freer got it out. Townsend couldn't play the puck. It'll go to the line, not out. Hines held it in. Second effort to center by Townsend. Now back are the moves. Hines, and we've got a whistle. And I believe we've got some penalties coming up. We've got Townsend looking at Colstad. I think those are both guys going out. I think he got them both. 11-15 to play in the third. 4-2. Shootout. What the heck? I mean, you know. <laughs> well, this is the period, the, 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 the time of the game, where Terry Ruskowski and the Arrows look up and see 11:15 to play. And right now, that's what they're thinking: the shootout. And I'm thinking they're going to score three goals here in the next five minutes. If he can get a goal, a goal in the next six or seven minutes, and go into the last four or five minutes of the game, just one goal down, I think he'd be. Well, not thrilled, but I think it's considered since he was down four goals, happy with that. Happy with the opportunity in the last four or five minutes of this game to get one to tie. So you kind of separate this thing into two sections. A six-minute section coming up here, and then the final five. And see if you can score one goal in each of those two sections and try to get this to a shootout and maybe steal one here. Here's a puck now in the move zone. It'll go to the line on out. Robinson rolls it down Arneal. Trying to feather one for Mark Freer behind the net. Nice move. Cuts in, can't find one to pass. Now Freer with some room to work, but he's worked on by Hextall. Freer finds Arneal behind the net, worked on by Hines. Now Sean Williams is there, and he'll race up the right wing boards. Cross size pass, knocked down by Robinson. Turn around by the arrows. Robinson crossed the line, sends it for Freer. Cuts in, shoots Draper the same rebound. New no, is Draper covered up a bobbling puck, and he'll hold on with 10 and a half. The play of the third and a 4 2 loose lead, a minute 24 left in the minors to both Townsend and number 29, Dean Colstad. Good opportunity for Mark Freer, but frankly, not a great shot. Good opportunity. It started at center ice with Robinson knocking the puck down, bringing it in the zone. He had a good little pass to Freer, but he couldn't quite get him uh, much on it and flipped one to the glove side, and Draper made the uh, save. Townsend and Colstead each got slashing penalties at 8.45. The double minors were playing four against four. You know, I think on that first shot, you know, he beat him top to the shoulder side, his left shoulder, and I think that's where he was trying to go again. Well, it's fine, but the first shot, he wound up and, and fired it by him uh, quickly. This one here didn't have much on it. 
Kicks off in the zero to the right side of Tom Draper. Drop of the puck. Picked up by Minnesota. And it's Brad Miller in behind the net. And he'll start the rush up with 10.34 to play. Third period in a 4-2 hockey game. Moose leader. Here's Dave Christian. He'll romp through the neutral zone. Lead pass. Just misses Snuggerud. It's icing. If the arrows get there, they will not gamble. Forced to play it. And he fires it right to Reed Larson. He centered the pass. But it's picked up by Curtis Hunt. He'll start the rush. Two on two. Now Hunt crosses the line. Pulls up. Sends it to Jakes and uh, play whistle down offsides and we'll take a timeout. 4-2 Moose and we'll be right back after this. Flavor of Mexico sizzles. Arrows trail the Minnesota Moose 4-2 as Curtis Hunt led the charge. A little three on two working, but again, second time of the game we had a defenseman leading that charge. And his job is just not to lead the charge like that. And he hesitated just enough to force that play offside. Another offside or another whistle is the puck frozen along the far wall and they'll face it off to the top of the far circle which is to the left side of Tom Draper. Tip it with St. Cyr, Valamont, Shagorodsky. Again, we're still four on four for another 51 seconds on the line to Polstad and to Graham Townsend. 30 shots on goal for Minnesota in the game. 24 for the Arrows. Here's Oleg Shagorodsky now. Pulls up along the fire circle. Trying to look out in front. He's muscled right off the puck and shot down the ice by Haxdall. Out of the net, Troy Gamble to negate the icing. And here's Carl Valamont. He'll set the rush up from right to left. Valamont out the right side. St. Cyr. Long lead pass for Oleg Shagorodsky. Trying to make his move around Blair Atchenham, but couldn't quite do it. Now the puck picked up by Olam. Larry Olam moves it up through the neutral zone as Olam carries the rush. Olam shoots it into the arrow zone. Far corner for Valamont. He'll drift in behind his net, fire it off the boards, and out to center ice. Nine and a half to play here in the third period and a 4-2 Moose lead. And now the penalty's down to five seconds. We'll be back to even strength. Here's a loose puck center ice. Robinson trying to muscle it along the board. He's tied up there by Williams. Penalty now over teams at five aside as we get a whistle. Play off at 9-12 to play in the third. 4-2 hockey game. It has been an uphill battle all night for the Arrows. Who trailed in this game 4-0 before Freer scored in the second period. And then uh, Cittaroni here in the third. So it's 4-2 and we've still got 9-12 to play. A lot of work yet to do. Minnesota comes in with just one win on the season. But that came uh, here on the road trip. They are ending tonight. Here's a giveaway. Ooh, and Moran almost got it by Robinson. But Robinson with a little luck on his side. And he'll fire it back into the Moose zone. Here is Robinson again now. And he has the puck stripped in a two-on-two -two break. Moran gets it over to Corvo. But he's run off the puck and away. The arrows come once again. Here is Mike Yo. He'll roam down the right side. Hits the line. Nice pass. Draper just missed. Here's Chitteroni again. Center the pass. Clayton Young didn't expect that. He got the shot away anyway, but I don't think he ever expected that to get to him. Well, Chitteroni doing some great work here. He almost uh, did indeed chip is a good description. Almost chipped it over at Draper, but then he stayed with it even while down on his knees in the corner. Stayed with it and ended up making a pass. If the pass to Chitteroni, the initial one was just a little softer, he might have put that one by. Then he gets up off his knees, gets a backhander right through the defense legs and the shot made on Draper but uh, Young couldn't put it by him. Much better period for the Arrows as far as shots on goal is in the period they're out shooting Minnesota 7-3. Still trail by two 837 a play. Black in the near corner Minnesota territory Chris Hines he'll move it off the glass and now a chance for Christian as he's in a foot race gamble takes a chance and almost threw it into his own net. Oh my well <laughs> He, uh, he played so well in Las Vegas, I think he brought a little of the luck with him. He has roamed quite a bit tonight, more than I've seen him roam. Uh, he's been out handling the puck behind the net, out in front of the net. This one, he comes out 
several feet from the net, uh, which isn't so bad if he clears it behind the net, but he wouldn't have been the first goaltender ever to turn and fire a backhander right into his own net. Fortunately, he did not. He put it off the side of the net, and then they go back and cover up. Face off to his left. Here against Christian, drop of the puck. Hines lets the shot go. Gamble, nice left pad save. Rebound scoots over now for Freer. Give it up to Jakes. And his long lead pass picked up by Scott Arneal. Arneal at center, trying to work it ahead, but it's taken away by Snuggerud. Snuggerud right side coughed it up, and now Hunt. Lead pass off the stick of Freer. Now bringing it in Townsend. Give it back, Freer. Townsend tipped it back to the line. Christian there. Arrows. Oh. Holding it in barely, but now Christian will have a chance. He can't clear it. A third effort finally gets out there, and Shank will turn it for Minnesota. Get it to Snuggerud. Back for Shank. Left side shoots. Whipped it wide of the net. Now along the near boards. Here is Scotty Arneal. Left wing for the Houston Arrows. Lead pass for here. He'll cross the line. Looking for Townsend instead. He'll just shoot it in. Draper comes out. Greer comes off for the line change. Here's Carl Ballamont now. Gave the puck up to Kolstad, and he'll chip that high in the air. Far boards and it's halted with 7.25 left in the third. We'll be right back, 4 2 in favor of the Minnesota Moose. Attention all Aggie fans, relive the greatest moments in Texas A&M football history with Aggies, a century of football tradition. Follow the incredible journey of the tradition-rich A&M football program. The 12th man, legendary coach Dana X. Bible, Heisman Trophy winner John David Crow, and more. The whole story of Texas A&M football at your fingertips. Call 1-800-769-8843 to order this once-in-a-lifetime publication right now. Gig em, Aggies! Along with Russ Small, I'm Adam Gordon in a 4-2 hockey game and 7.25 left in the third. Clayton Young, Mike Yo, Mario Cittaroni with Palamont. Shargarotsky, Arrows win the draw. They'll go back in their own zone. Arrows down by two, but still some time. But like you said, there's we got to play it in segments here, and there's six-minute segments just about up, Russ. Yeah, there's still some time, but not as much as there used to be. <laughs> Here's a pocket center ice for Mario Cittaroni. He'll drop it back for Yo. Let's the shot go, and that just slides wide of the net. Shargarotsky fires it along the boards. Far corner. Hextall is run into by Yo. Here is Clayton Young behind the net. Young center the pass and Cittaroni couldn't get a good shot away. Here's Mike Yo now for Young. Tipped it Cittaroni. Arrows really grinding along the wall. Centered Yo. Couldn't get the shot. Puck in front and there was Draper to cover up and hold on. What a workman's job by Young. Yo and Cittaroni. 4-2 644 to play. We're at the point now I think they almost have to start job for checking getting that puck free setting up some teammates did it again a moment ago here behind the net they got to get that puck out in front of the net try to score They're down to 644 to play face off in the circle to the left of Tom Draper puck picked up by the moose and they'll come to center ice Williams into arrow territory gamble out of the net and a puck that hits a weird part of the boards but it comes squarely off to Dave Tippett now for Eves, he'll roll it into the Moose zone. Eves trying to move it through Larson, couldn't do it. And Larson now cuts in front of his net. Pass ahead for Moran. Here is Stefan Moran up the boards to Ivan Corvo, but didn't find the handle, and it's out to center ice. Williams tossed it back into the arrow zone. Here is Rob Robinson up the left side. Robinson shoots it into the Minnesota zone. It'll slice along the far boards, picked up by Heaves. Trying to find it in behind the net, but there's Hines for the Moose to get it to the line. Not out. Robinson held it in. Shank trying to clear it, and he wasn't able to do that with his momentum from the body of him flying out of the zone. Here's Eves. Lost the puck, and Moran now trying to get it out of there, and Right now, the Arrows trying to muster something, can't do it. Here is uh, Mike Maurice circling in behind the net, trying to stuff it. St. Cyr with a drive. He had a chance, leading ease, but he couldn't tip it by Draper. Another inch for Eve, and this is a 4-3 hockey game. Now, Jake's at center. A pass picked up by St. Cyr. Cuts into the slot. The shot wide. Rebound! And Draper was able to work that free. Eve's now trying to find Jake. Center that, but no one there. Now it is Curtis Hunt. Rolls it down. Eve centered the drive. Should be calling. 
calling the second one on Hines, but he's not. He's only calling the initial penalty. Let me see. Oh, wow. It was Hines initially, but I don't think he's calling Hines with the second one out in front, and he should be. All right. We'll be back after this. 4 2 loose lead. We'll be right back. Ordinary beer can, barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild it. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic can. Coors Light will be that can. Better than it was before. Taller, thinner, silver. Next on the Coors Light Channel. Arrows trail 4-2, but they're getting a power play here with 5.06 to play. Bruce Hines right out in front of his goaltender gets called for the hold. Moments later, he should be called for a second hold during the delayed penalty, but it wasn't called there. The Arrows have it behind their own net, ready to rush. Under five minutes to play in the third. 4-2 moves. Here is Valamont. Shoots it into the Minnesota zone. Draper out of the net. And the Arrows get within one. Arneal right side back to the line Shargarodsky arrows 0 for 2 on the power play tonight here is Arneal top of the slot Shargarodsky back Arneal rolls it down here's the chance in front of the starts from Arneal up at the point and they get it down to Freer. He uses Valamont as a little decoy and he stuffs it home as he comes right out and then goes short side on Draper and the fans go crazy. Mark Freer goes crazy with his fifth goal of the season. We talked about him right at the top of the show Adam. How he's on a real good scoring streak and he's a guy we expect to lead the way here tonight and he has 431 to play and within one it's 4-3. How about this for a scoring binge? Three goals, three assists in his last three games. So threes were wild, but boy, the arrows with three goals would love to make it four. Arneal and Shargarodsky get the helpers. Now Chitteroni right side. He's blasted off the puck, but the arrows turn it around. was sad to announce the loss of several of our greens this summer they look pretty bad and I felt safe betting our superintendent they wouldn't be back before September well a bet's a bet two or eighteen the greens are back 4-3 hockey game. Here's Steve Jakes down the right side as he hits the line. Jakes trying to center it. It hit a leg. Kolstad is there. Clear it up the boards, and it's out to center ice. Here is Curtis Hunt, right wing. He'll shoot it into the Minnesota zone. Draper comes out of the net, gives to Hines. Chris Hines to the line. It's out to center. Here come the moose. It is Young, barreling in on goal. Two on one. Young, turn, shoot, scores! John Young, what a play! hockey game moose lead big goal there well when you go all out at one end you're going to give up some breaks at the other we talked about it early in this period of the moose were trying to get some breaks through center ice they got a big break here young took it in all the way coming in off the off wing just holds it holds it holds it and finally just puts the backhander in behind troy gamble and so uh, mo has 
shifted again. Momentum was on the side of the arrows there for a few moments. Now it's gone back to Minnesota, which leads 5-3. Such an extra deflating goal after as well as the arrows battled back in this period. Here's Daniel Schenk now. He's run off the puck by Shargaronsky. So deflating the scorekeeper won't even put it up on the board. It still says 4-3 up on the board. Here's Stuckeroo back in behind the net. Trying to move it out in front. Shargaronsky now's got it. 2.41 left here in the third. Now a chance for Freer. He's got a pair of goals. Trying to make it three, but a great save made by Draper. Now Christian chips it along the boards, and it's out to center ice. Honest to good. Oh, they just changed it. Changed it just now to 5-3. Here's Carl Valamont. Maybe they weren't going to count it. Oh, that would be great. Valamont shoots the puck into the moose zone. 2.21 left in the third. Christian make it uh, Reed Larson now from left to right. Hooks a pass to center. Intercepted by Arneal. Trying to get it up for Freer. Freer along the fireboard. Wrapped up by Larson. It comes to center ice. Chris Foy. He'll shoot it into the Moose zone. Draper will let it roll. And Larry Olam will take over for the Moose. Pass out to the right side for Reed Larson. Hoists it to center. Robinson went down on all fours to try and get in front of that. And action and trying to pick it loose. Instead, the Moose shoot it in. And Gamble comes out of the net with under two minutes to play in the third and a 5-3 Moose lead. All you can do now is go for broke. Here is Clayton Young, right side, drops for Cittarone, gives to Foy. But he couldn't get the shot away, and now pass that goes all the way down the ice. Gamble again comes out of the net, and <laughs> he just waits and says, I'll give it to Robbie Robinson. Now it is Foy, pass center ice, picked up by Mike Yo. He'll shoot it into the loose zone. Raper comes out, he'll clear it himself to neutral. Jinks back to his own blue line to pick it up. Team left in the third and a 5-3 Moose lead. Puck in the Minnesota zone. Hines. The battle with Yo. It'll go along for Valamont. And the arrows have to go back for it. Is the Ivan Corvo with the net empty, though. Arrows have an empty net. Here is Corvo who turns with the empty net. Stuff shot blocked by Valamont. So Terry Wiskowski feels down by two. He's going to go and pull Troy Gamble. The cage is empty. Maurice, left side. Pass center ice for a breaking Mario Cittarone. Under a minute to play in the third. Yo. Well, centered it, but nobody there. And Draper now tries to clear, but not out. Maurice gets it for Cittarone. Sends it right in. And Draper makes the stick save and holds on. With 42 seconds to play here in the third in a 5-3 Moose lead. Difficult, but not impossible. 42 seconds to play. That goal by Young really just, uh, really just killed him. Killed the uh, the fans here as well. They figured this opportunity has gone by the boards. Really, it was an uphill battle all night long for the Arrows, who frankly did not play well many moments of the game. Get themselves down by four. Get it back within four three. But now with 42.2 seconds to play, it is five three in favor of the Moose. We got a timeout on the ice. You know, Russ, as poorly as the Arrows have played, not only tonight but uh, uh, last night in the last half of the hockey game against the Peoria River. You know, I guess if you have to keep things on a positive perspective, they did get three points, three of a possible six. That's not very, bad. You know, that's, that's very positive. It is still a, uh, a team that's only been together for a few weeks, uh, maybe several weeks, but it's not like it's a team that's played together for a couple of years. A lot of guys still learning each other. It's a team that should get better as the season goes on. I hope so. Uh, not that they're playing badly here in the first couple of weeks, very much in the thick of things, uh, but they do need to work on a couple of things, playing with the lead, number one among them. That was not, unfortunately, the scenario tonight. They never had the lead tonight. Tonight they had to play from behind, and they did. They were down four goals. Got back to within 4-3 here in the third period, so we know they can play from behind. Get the shots on goal, 32 for the Moose, while the Arrows have 32 apiece, if my math is correctly. I don't do it very quickly, but... I think that's right, 32-32. But the important stat is five on the board for Minnesota, three for the Arrows and the goals. And a face-off to the right of Tom Draper, and the net remains unoccupied for the Arrows. Six attackers out there. Arrows win the draw. Arneal works it behind the net. Center, that might have deflected off Draper. Now Shagorotsky worked it down. Here's a chance. Townsend flips one to the line. That got by Oleg, and it's out to center ice. Shagorotsky trying to fire it for Mike Yo. Here is Graham Townsend now. A blue line slap shot. Draper with a stick save. Puck clear to center. And now Valamont turns it up for Arneal. Has to wait for Freer to get onside. So now he shoots it in. We're going to get a penalty. Oh boy, sticks are getting high. Townsend, he's in the middle of it. Freer's all locked up and everybody matching 
up right now. Watch out. This is not unlike what happened at uh, Vegas late, late in the game when it all broke loose. I don't think it's, it's going to get that bad here. I don't either. But watch out. Graham Townsend in the middle of it. And not a happy camper right now. Well, I think he may end up getting an extra penalty. As he kind of gave, I think it was Williams, an extra shot there, which drew the penalty, the original one. Thirteen and a half seconds to play. Terry Ruskowski's team about to uh, drop one here at home. The Minnesota Moose. Final score, all that's left to be determined, I think. 5-3 at the moment in favor of Minnesota. The uh, Arrows now will pick up their first loss at home this year. Or no, excuse, no they, the second loss. They lost to Denver. I'm thinking of the shootout loss, though. They had to Peoria. Lost 6-5, was it, to Denver? Yeah. 5-4. Uh, 5 4 indeed to Denver. The night before they had uh, played a 6 5 game in Atlanta. Well, they're going to go down here, most likely 5 3. And we get the calls here. Yeah, five minute high sticking on Townsend. And he is ejected. Now, on the, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, on this weekend in Vegas, the uh, Arrows won 6-3. to three. Here last night, a shootout loss 3-2 to Peoria. And here tonight, probably a 5-3 loss to Minnesota. So the net reoccupied by Troy Gamble. There's 10 seconds left as the puck shot into the Minnesota zone. And, you know, for all intents here, the time windows down here. The, it really wasn't a physical contest either, which, you know, not surprising with three days and three nights, but you do need to be physical as the buzzer sounds. It was sluggish. It was not the Arrows' best game. They'll just have to get past this one and work towards the next. All right, 5-3 the final. And when we return, we'll have more from the summit right after this. Dying to solve a mystery? There's another aspect of the case. Well, it's a mere trifle, really. Aching for some intrigue? We could make a fortune. Yearning for something new? We're in Bryden on business. Well, I am. They're here for the ride. Call Lovejoy. Fascination never felt so good. Lovejoy Mysteries, Monday on A&E. I'm Larry Forehand. At Casa Ole, you'll taste the delicious difference in our food from the very first bite. Everything at Casa Ole is prepared fresh at each location. Try our tasty chili and queso made with 100% real American cheese, beans and rice prepared fresh daily, and what can I say about our crisp chips and hot sauces? You guessed it, made fresh every day. Now that's a fabulous start to a great meal. So the next time you crave great Mexican food, taste the difference. Casa Ole, fresh today. Vegas, you can dine at one of seven world-class restaurants, pamper yourself at a luxurious European spa, or explore the mysteries of the pyramid in a multi-million dollar virtual reality adventure. So, we thought we'd show you your room now, because you probably won't be seeing much of it later. Luxor Las Vegas, get into it. Hi, I'm Hub Arkish, publisher and editor of Pro Football Weekly, and I'd like to make you an offer I really hope you can't refuse. I want to send you a 10-issue trial subscription to Pro Football Weekly for just $10. That's right, 10 issues for just 10 bucks of the best coverage in the NFL. That's more than 70% off the actual cost. Unless you're completely satisfied, we'll automatically renew your subscription when the trial ends and send you a free copy of our 1995 NFL Draft Preview. Don't miss this one-time special. Call today, toll-free, at 1-800-FOOTBALL. Credit card orders only, please. Houston heats up again. The excitement of the 94 NBA season is about to blast off. And the world champion Rockets are smoking with preseason action. Monday night on HSE. Today's Houston Arrows broadcast has been brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. And by Columbia HCA Healthcare Corporation. A new commitment to healthcare together. Three, the final tonight from the summit in Houston, Adam Gordon, along with Russ Small. And, well, you know, 
again, the Arrows still putting in an inconsistent effort. They put in a good 20 minutes here in this third period for all intents and purposes, but struggled in the first two periods. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what you contribute to. Of course, you know, fatigue would have to be one thing, but, uh, you know, at least they'll get tomorrow off and then they're back at it this week. I don't know what to attribute it to either. I will say this. I think they worked hard. I mean, I don't think they have to be ashamed that their work ethic or it, uh, they didn't come out here to, uh, to lay an egg. It just didn't happen for them. You're going to have nights like that, whether you're at home or away, where no matter what you do, if you go right, you should have gone left. If you go forward, you should have gone backward. It was one of those games they worked hard, and it was only through hard work they got as close as 4-3 as they did here near the end. So they worked hard. They tried to give the fans uh, an exciting game, and it just they were just a little sluggish, and it just didn't happen for them. So they suffer the 5-3 loss, and they move on. Arrows were trailing 4-2, and then made it 4-3 uh, reasonably late in that third period, and that would take us to our Southwest Airlines play of the game, and it's brought to you by Southwest Airlines just playing smart. The back-breaking goal here by John Young. Well, Young just comes in. It's a two-on-one, uses the decoy, and then just slides the backhander by Troy Gamble. The Arrows had had to try to move up ice. There was four minutes to play in a the game. They knew they had to get in and get the uh, game tire if they're going to send it on from there it wasn't surprising that they could get caught up a little bit and give a two on one young goes in uses the decoy waits and waits and waits finds the opening slides it by gamble and uh, backbreaker indeed as it's the fifth goal and makes it a 5-3 final after the arrows had come back from a four goal deficit all right let's take a look at tonight's final stats they're brought to you by the pasta company restaurant and you can see the final shots the arrows come back to out shoot the Minnesota Moose 33-32. Deceiving. Yes, very. As the Moose make 30 saves, Dom Draper does, I should say. Troy Gamble with 27 stops. The Minnesota Moose finish two of five on the power play wall. The arrows go one of three, and the penalties seven for the Moose, 15 minutes. And the Houston Arrows seven for 20 minutes. And actually, that's a pleasing statistic after all the physical play we saw this weekend, especially in Vegas. Really, I thought the difference was that Minnesota was a half step quicker, whether it's the fatigue or whether just Minnesota is quicker or just was quicker tonight, no matter how many games the Arrows have played the last couple of nights. I won't create excuses for them except to say that Minnesota jumped on the loose puck. Minnesota jumped into the uh, free areas on the ice. The Arrows for most of the game did not get second and third chances till the till the very end of the game, and Minnesota did at the other end. They were quicker, they were sharper, and they won the game. Russ, thanks for your help tonight. Hey, always a pleasure. Looking forward to the Village people. <laughs> All right. For Russ Small, this is Adam Gordon reminding you the next Houston Arrows broadcast will take place from the St. Paul Civic Center Wednesday when they take on the Minnesota Moose. That'll be a K News game. Our next HSC Arrows Network game will be Friday night at 7 o'clock when Houston hosts the Phoenix Roadrunners. Once again, the final score tonight from the Southern in Houston, the Minnesota Moose 5 and the Houston Arrows 3. So long, everybody, from the Summit.